We will call the meeting to order. I guess you can leave your cell phones on, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> it's in the script to silence them, but uh, city clerk, if you'd call the roll, please. Mayor Owen. Here. Vice Mayor Coloni. Here. Commissioner Hartman. Here. Commissioner McGurk. Here. Commissioner Sachs. Here. Thank you. <laughs> All right. We'll stand for uh, invocation and the remain standing for the pledge, please. Stop. Would you few pray with me? <laughs> oh, divine presence, we come together this evening grateful for the gift of another day for the blessings you have shared with us, the opportunities we've been given to be a blessing to others. We acknowledge our own fears and our anxieties about our present time. In times such as these, we seek your guidance, wisdom, strength, and support as we continue the task of making important decisions that impact our community. We ask your blessings upon our mayor, our city commissioners, and the city officials that they may use their best skills, resources, and judgment with regard to the matters placed before them. Give direction and understanding to all who are placed in positions of leadership and service in our community, in our schools, our workplaces, medical facilities, places of worship and recreation, and throughout our neighborhoods. Provide protection for our medical providers, first responders, law enforcement officers, and all who are serving our community faithfully day and night to protect the well-being of all our citizens and those who visit our community. Take away the fear, anxiety, and feelings of isolation and despair this coronavirus has stirred in many of us and throughout our world. Help us all as leaders and citizens of New Smyrna Beach Engage in healthy discussions tonight. Respect our differences. Practice random acts of kindness. And honor social distancing in order to validate the worth of every human being as we strive together to create and maintain a healthy, wholesome, and unified community. As we work together for the common good of all, guide our hearts and our minds in the spirit of unity and charity. In the name of divine love, with many names, we pray. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, first item up, uh, approval of the agenda. Before we do that, just so we're crystal clear on one item, I want to be very clear on item, uh, what would that be, 8C is a quasi-judicial public hearing. They do have an attorney that's present that wants to make sure he's a part of any any discussion on that item. So as we go through this, I don't it won't come up before then, but if it, if it does, we'd have to defer all of that until he is in the room present. Um, so in these... Extraordinary times, taking what measures we have to take, and that's one we're going to take for tonight, which is how we'd normally do it anyway, but just want to be clear. Um, any other changes on the agenda, Khaled? Yes. yes uh, we could move uh, mayors and commission reports right after public participation. There's some decisions that you might have to make in that discussion that might affect some of the other items, so I would just that we move it just right after the public participation. Okay. I'm okay with that. Any, con any objections to that from the commission? All right. And I think one of those items we'll be talking about is, um, I think city attorneys probably briefed all of us, but there's certain items that we're probably not wanting to go into great discussion on today, um, trying to continue those, but trying to make some decisions about how long we should continue those. So that will be for discussion then. Um, if no other changes to the agenda, no announcements or presentations, public participation, uh, Kelly, have we received anything? No, we have not. So just to be clear, we obviously, I think each of us received probably a, what feels like hundreds or thousands of emails, but there were none that were specifically sent to the clerk for reading into uh, the public participation part of the agenda today. Uh, last I checked, there wasn't any public out there. Chief, has anybody walked up since that's different that would like to participate?
One person. All right. Come on in. Temperature check first. So I'm just going to have them stand right in the middle of that aisle right there so they're not touching anything. Sounds good to me. Actually, just we're going to have you stand right here in the middle aisle. Actually, just come up right, right in between those chairs right here to the front. And yep, you can speak from right there. Hang on, yep, right there is good, just so you don't touch anything else. Okay. <laughs> okay, go ahead. No problem. I uh, actually wasn't here to speak. Uh, I felt like I was ushered in. Oh. Uh, however, I'm with Yellowstone Landscape. I think we have a consent agenda. Yep. D, I believe. Yep. Okay. So, if you have any questions. Okay, thank you for being here. Thank you. Mr. Appreciate it. All right. Uh, nope. Go. Yep. Go. Go on out. We'll we'll call. We'll call. Well, actually, head on out. Yeah. Okay. Going out. We'll we'll call you in if we need you. We're trying to keep it to ten people in the room to follow CDC guidelines, and we're we're kind of flirting around that number as we speak. All right. No others for public out there. Thank you all. All right. We'll close public participation. We we'll go to mayor and commission comments. We'll come down the line, but. Um, Let's just lead off. I'll, I'll start off with this one item. Um, we have a regular scheduled meeting on the 18th and another one on the 28th. I would suggest, gentlemen, that we put the, the items, that if we choose to postpone items tonight, that we postpone those until the 28th. That gives us flexibility on the 14th. If we do have to have a meeting, if it's remote or something like that, or even if we have to cancel it, um, we're just not having to worry about trying to continue those one more, um, one more time. So... Uh, that's my initial comment, and then we'll uh, we'll lead off with any other mayor and commission comments. But just make sure to speak to that one specifically. We'll start with the vice mayor. Okay, uh, there is one item that I would like to see carried. That would be item eight B. Uh, it could generate uh, quite a bit of public interest, and I would like to see that put off, if possible. So I think what we'll do is as, as those items come up, we will, I think we have to make the motions like as those items come up, right, Carrie? Okay. So I think the, the real question, though, is just the dates that we're going to do that to. So meeting on the 14th or the 28th, my suggestion would be the 28th. That's fine by me. Okay. Anything else for mayor and commission reports? Yes. Uh, there's one thing I do want to say regarding uh, working at home. Uh, I don't think the, uh, the public really understands how we've been setting the standard here all along. When a week before the meeting, we get a 1,200 or a 1,500 page agenda, we do that at home. We spend hours, I hope everyone up here is spending hours, reviewing that so we're prepared. So uh, working at home is very important. I'm sure a lot of people are figuring out how to do that. And I applaud that uh, effort. There are uh, obvious changes that we're making in the way we operate our business on a day-to-day -day basis. I'm confident that our staff is, uh, is in the forefront, everything I've seen. I'm very proud of the way the actions have gone on. Uh, I do have uh, three items that I would just like to have. Uh, I would mention that. We have a loading zone issue where we're working on reports for that. We have a Brannon Center issue regarding possible changes to bring more business in and involve the, uh, involve the uh, Canal Street merchants with. And we do have our land development regulations where I'm looking to have some real wholesale changes done before we reach the end of this year. Uh, one item we're talking about on the agenda is from something that was set up a number of years ago. So we have to prepare ourselves for the future by making these amendments regarding protecting the environment and, and having usable uh, properties in our PUDs. So I don't want to report on them now. I just want to kindly remind our staff that uh, I'm going to be looking, once we get past this item, for uh, uh, for some action in that that regard, 
Uh, other than the coronavirus, I'm glad to see all of our, uh, our businesses and our residents are handling it very well. I think it took a little time for our visitors to catch on that they should be behaving and following the rules. And uh, it seems things have calmed down within the community. Uh, probably the only area I see where it has excessive use is the boat ramps. There are boats and trailers parked all over the place. I don't want to discourage people from getting out on the water, but we have capacity issues, and we're going to have to address them. So basically, that's it. Uh, okay. Mayor. We'll go... We'll just go that way. Commissioner McGurk, you can go next. Thank you, Mayor. I just wanted to say thank you, staff, fire, police, everybody who's been, has life has been upheaved by this, especially all the first responders and, and you know, department heads who are basically changing their lifestyle and operations on the fly. Uh, I'm doing something similar with my business completely 180 degrees on how we always did things. So I'm happy to see everybody here. I'm happy to see that we have no um, major outbreak in this community yet, and hopefully it'll stay that way. And I'm glad to see everybody that I know is healthy and well. Um, the one comment I wanted to make, the prevailing thought or concern around the country and in the, and in the state of Florida is the exodus of New York residents who are trying to flee their outbreak. This seems to be their number one destination, is Florida. We have not been hit too hard yet. I am deeply concerned that we can. I would urge you, if you know anybody, friends, neighbors, even family, to not risk other states the kind of outbreak they're experiencing, and to try to stay home and hold up. Do not possibly bring this virus in large numbers here and have a lot of community spread due to travelers coming from outside the state. Thank you, Mayor. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Sachs, go next. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So far, so good, for the most part. I think a very large part of this epidemic is the panic and the mental portion it's played heavily on our city, a little bit on my family. We're all responsible. We all have families, grandparents, extended family. And I'm concerned mostly for them. As, as Commissioner Hartman would know, as firefighters, we've been through a lot of different diseases. We're familiar with epidemics, and we know what outcomes may lie. But we are kind of a funnel for Central Florida's tourists, and still a fine mecca. Fortunately, we haven't seen an outbreak in our city. I'm still very concerned that the county has not helped it. In a kind, I'm saying this in a kind way. They have not helped the situation by uh, keeping some of our venues open. I know the state has their purview as far as restaurants and bars. Look, frankly, I would rather see a man able to go to work after two weeks of being out of work or never having to be, have the chance to go at all to risk a grandparent or even somebody now we're finding out from 20 to 50 years old could be a possible target for this epidemic. So I think our city, we should have a discussion even sometime today at any further me measures that we can take to ward off being that kind of target rich environment. Um, again, I'm not an epidemiologist, but uh, coming through Miami Beach and the HIV threats we had there, that plague came on so suddenly, and it could happen here as well. So being the wonderful city that everybody wants to visit, let's see if we can take some measures on our own. I know it is the county's beach. I was quite upset that we did not close the beach. It's my personal opinion. As a civic leader, I, I think we should all share our personal opinions there. I do feel very bad for the restaurant and bar owners. We spoke to some of them. We spoke to the actual workers, the people that own those services. They're very scared and concerned. And for all other service employees in the city and our own personnel, um, hats off especially to our first responders. 
um, I know what threats they face. But I, I think we should uh, talk a little more about this uh, relationship with the county and on what we can do to better protect our, what seems to be our elderly population is at most risk now. Thanks for your time. Okay. So my suggestion would be um, let's get through these items so we can get the, the folks that are here. And then at the end, I think we do need to talk through. We've got the event schedule that was given to us. Uh, I think we, at a minimum, need to do that um, and to make some decisions. And so I think at that point, we'll, we'll have a little time to talk about any other measures we might want to try to take. But I'd like to get everybody cleared out as much as as much as possible on those items. Um, for the two of you, just want to be clear, are you all okay with, uh, for any items that are postponed, uh, shooting for the 28th for both of those versus 14th? Commissioner Sachs, sorry. Uh, Commissioner Hartman. All right, so I, I won't go into it. Um, you know, I share the same sentiments as the rest of, of us up here on the dais on how well staff has stepped up and taken over, of course, um, police and fire. Um, you know, they don't get the option to stay home and work from home, um, unfortunately. Um, but I, I do have one thing on my mind that, that we were supposed to do our evaluations in early April, and we were supposed to have an agreement on a form to use, and we've not even discussed that yet. So I've asked the city manager if maybe um, the HR director could give us a, a form or maybe one or two that in particular and that we could go ahead and do that process. Because I think that we made that commitment to the citizens months ago that we were going to do these evaluations and we were going to do them before the budget process, early in the budget process. So I think it's important that we do that. Um, if we can just get that done before that April 28th meeting. I certainly would appreciate it, and I have no problem with waiting until then on anything that gets tabled. Okay. Question for you on that. The, are you you're saying just to have HR basically kind of take the best of what they saw from all of ours and give us a, a recommended form that we would all use? Because obviously we probably have a lot of time to discuss and agree upon a form between now and April 28th if that's the target. Right. Well, I asked if she, she could just look and see what we did the, the last yeah. time and see if there was some commonality in there. Or if, if maybe we, you know, we all use one or two of the same forms or something. Okay. But, you know, if not, then we'll just play it by ear like we did last time. I just think it's important that we get, get that done. We need to keep some normal Agreed. normalness, normalness in our lives, if that's a word. Normalcy, and, um, yeah. you know. <laughs> okay. All right. I support that. So, yeah, if, if um, Fernina can just send send something over and let's say we can probably all just take a little latitude we'll take the form that she provides as a base and then as we did last time i think everybody kind of put their their spin on it to me that conversation is, is always a bit you know it, it's meant to be a, a communication tool it's meant to facilitate communication like that's meant to kind of capture and facilitate communication so um whatever that form looks like is really just a way to capture hopefully a series of conversations because performance is something that just you talk about one time you know if I have five issues with any performance I'm gonna they're gonna know it long before early April I can tell you that so uh, okay is that it do you have any yes, other items okay it. thank you um, so uh, most of my items are really kind of directly related to our response and other measures we might want to consider so I would say um, I, I do thank staff again, first responders. It's all been said. I especially thank Khaled. Um, you know, a lot of a lot of pressures on city leaders at this time. Um, you know, to be available 24/7, making quick decisions. Um, and I, I've I've been I've enjoyed working with Khaled through this. I think we've made some some quick calls that have been the right calls. Uh, Saturday, for instance. Um, was going around as, as everyone was responding to the to-go order that was put in place by the governor maybe Friday maybe Saturday I don't remember it kind of it's all running together but whenever that came out um, was going around and, and visiting some of the businesses talking to them and and it came up uh, what the land had done with providing the spots for the to-go parking where the businesses were directly curb front um, so talked to Khaled and uh, he supported that rolled out um, rolled that out as a temporary measure um, so I, th I think we're making some some quick calls but the right calls uh, and I appreciate his availability uh, he's not he's not taking weekends off and this isn't a 
He's uh, not a home with the feet kicked up by the pole right now, and so I, I appreciate him. And uh, But really, the rest of the staff, because I know it's not him. There's a whole team behind him that's facilitating that. So hats off to all of them as we will get through this. All right, with that, uh, consent agenda. Uh, and I also support moving things to the 28th, and then we'll talk about whether or not we'll talk about that April 14th meeting when we talk about all of our uh, regularly scheduled stuff. Uh, any items to pull from the consent agenda? We'll just start. Uh, sorry, Khaled. Yes. Just one on uh, the item for consent agenda regarding the budget amendments. Yep. If you could pull that item out, because uh, we did use one of the dais a revised budget amendment. Thanks to Commissioner uh, Hartman, he pointed out one thing, and so it's we item A. It. Okay. So item A, we're going to pull. Any other items? Jake, we'll start. Or Commissioner Sachs, we'll start with you. Question or two. You'll bear with me, please. The sun is right in my eye. Oh, sorry. Uh, D. Okay. And C. Okay. D and C. And a really quick comment on G. All right. And I'm sorry. A quicker comment on I. Okay. Got the whole thing there, don't I? <laughs> All right, Commissioner McGurk, anything no, left I'm to good. pull? Thank you, Commissioner uh, Vice Mayor Cloney. The only one I was going to pull was A. Okay, uh, Commissioner Hartman. Uh, I think Commissioner Sachs already pulled it. I think he, yes, the one I had. So, okay, okay. um, there's at least a 50% chance he did. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Commissioner uh, uh, Kyle, do you want to start on item A? You want to explain that one, and then we'll, let's see if my, uh, Commissioner Claudia has any. Oh, sorry, yes. Yeah, let's do, so uh, do I have a motion to adopt the rest of consent agenda? So that's items B, E, F, H, and J. B, E, F, H, and J. So moved. Second. City Clerk, if you'd call the roll, please. Vice Mayor Colodi. Yes. Commissioner Hartman? Yes. Commissioner McGurk? Yes. Commissioner Sachs? Yes. Mayor Owen? Yes. Thank you. Calladay? Uh, the one that was attached to the agenda, which is Exhibit A, it had $2,500 for Marine Discovery Center, but the commission two meetings ago, they agreed to give $10,000, but $7,500 in this fiscal year and 2500 for the next fiscal year. Yep. So staff, we forgot, we put the 2500 so we took it up. The other items is... Uh, so to be clear on that one, so do we just need to not do anything with this and get it corrected, or are we going to yes, approve the corrected out. one? We took it out. This revised one is actually, we took the 2500 out. Okay, got it. And then uh, Commissioner Colodi, during the briefing, he had some questions about what's in the budget amendment. We have some uh, police police pension and fire pension adjustments. Typically what happened during the budget, they would have an estimated number. So they estimated that like 18 something percent. The actual from Brown Brown is 25.5 percent. So that's what stands there. And then you got the funding for the turf at the sport complex. You got $400,000 from ECHO. And then, so you need $550,000 from the general fund to make the 950000 So that's what the rest of it. Okay. We're on consent agenda. Is that, is that what you were trying to find out for him? They can't hit peer call it out. The speaker's out there. Oh, gotcha. The All right, yeah, just okay. don't touch the podium and speaker um, out there. All right. Um, you don't have to repeat all that. Don't, okay. don't pick it up. Okay, uh, Commissioner Clody, any other items or anything, other comments on A? No, basically my, my comments uh, are looking forward comments. Uh, I'm glad to see we have the adjustment for the, uh, the turf. It's a big chunk of money. We have to be very careful about things we're doing in the future because when it comes around the budget time, I want us to have a nice, compact budget. So uh, this is an item we all voted for, including myself. But we're going to just have to be really careful when we start adding other projects <laughs> down the line. So that, that's my comments. Okay. Do I have a motion on item A? I'll make I'll make a motion to approve that. Second. 
City Clerk. Commissioner Hartman. Yes. Commissioner McGurk. Yes. Commissioner Sachs. Yes. Vice Mayor Colodi. Yes. Mayor Owen. Yes. Thank you. Jake Adams C. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just wanted to make sure a quick question for Khalid. Um, in that contract for building maintenance services, the Babe, Alonzo Babe James does its own services? Yeah. Um, in, the, in this contract, the legal services. Just, go there. Just stay over there for now. <laughs> Um, Legion Services buildings such as the Brandon Center and uh, the Coronado Civic Center and Dave James, they are being maintained by a staff, and that is Michael Booth. Michael has worked for the uh, school board for a long time, and he does a good job, and they like to clean, especially the Babe James, probably twice a day, so that's what he does. Thank you. Well, kudos to him. Okay. Uh, have a motion on item C. I'll just motion uh, approved. Or do you have another question on that? Sorry. Yeah, just a comment. On okay. It. Yes. Go ahead. Uh, I too had uh, discussed this with uh, Khaled. Uh, I wondered why we were uh, seemingly separating one facility out, and I didn't want it to appear we were we were doing anything different in the Babe James. But now I understand that it is our procedures to uh, Babe James and two other facilities, including Coronado, are taken care of in-house so yes just wanted to make that clear okay I believe I heard a motion but just for clarity Jake you, you made a motion to approve item C yes okay we have a second city clerk Commissioner McGurk yes Commissioner Sachs yes Vice Mayor Colony yes Commissioner Hartman yes Mayor Owen yes thank you item D Commissioner Sachs oh uh, yes I have reported it this is probably the third year I would hope and wish that Yellowstone would blow their clippings into the grass where it is supposed to go. Okay. Um, thank you. Yes. Commissioner Sachs, I have uh, taken your, uh, your, your concern and I talked to Faith yes. and we talked to uh, Yellowstone and Faith will give you a report on that. The Yellowstone guy, Melissa. Yeah, Will is here. Too. Yeah. I didn't know he was going to be here. Um, they do not do that. It's a strict policy that they do not blow uh, clippings into the drains. What you might see along the road is that some property owners, commercial property owners, still use their own commercial lawn uh, mowers to mow, and it's possible that it's them. You might see them with the yellow vest or the orange vest, but it's them. Yellowstone has an extremely strict policy not to do that. So, for your, for I your hope, benefit, I hope, the... they, I hope they thank you, Faith. I, and I have an email from and confirming that, and he's, they, okay. they don't do that. Okay. You might be seeing others, and if we see them, we try to stop them and tell them they're not allowed to do that. Okay. So. The they continue then not to. The concern was about blowing grass clippings into the storm drains. The storm drains. So, been informed that that's against your policy. You don't do that, and we Absolutely. hope that you maintain that. Don't touch that podium. Yes. Sir. <laughs> Put your hands in your pocket. Um, yeah. <laughs> so. Yellowstone Landscape has a very strict policy against blowing in the drains, um, safety policies and such. So we do not practice that. Um, it's against the Watershed Act of 1954, which I would hope you, you guys are probably familiar. Um, if you're not, it is... Um, you don't have to explain the whole act. We, okay. We'll All go right. look it up. Just Okay. Yeah. Good. Those are your practices. Please follow them. Yes, sir. We absolutely do. Yep. All right. Yep. Thank you. Hey. Thank y'all. Motion to approve item D. I got a question. Oh, sorry. That was one of my. Don't leave. Yes, sir. So, uh, it actually would be the faith I would guess. I was wondering what the what the co cost difference between number one and number two were. Um. I didn't see that in the report. Sorry. Number um. Well, number one, it was an RFP, so it wasn't low bid. So number one was Yellowstone at 469,560. The next company ground check was 521,450. Okay. okay. All right. All right. Do I have a motion on C? No, D. Sorry, D. Move to approve D. I'll second. Okay. City Clerk. Commissioner you, Six. Yes. Vice Mayor Cloney. Yes. Commissioner Hartman. Yes. Commissioner McGurk. Yes. Mayor Owen. Yes. Thank you. Item G, Commissioner Sachs. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Item G, uh, 
Gentlemen, this is the beginning of a traffic study for traffic lights for the fire stations. Amen to that. That's my only comment. I, I, I don't require a vote. Well, I guess I do. We, we got a vote on it, yeah. Yes. All right, item G, motion. motion. to approve. I, comment? I just have a comment. Sure. Um, you know, Mike, okay, Brian. My, my concern was if we do a traffic study now with, with, without the visitors coming into town, how bad that would skew it. If we could use the old study, if I thought would accept that, um, that would be much better. And then would also save us some money that we wouldn't have to repeat something that we could use a previous one. Um, but that's a really good question. We asked our consultant that we may be able to use the data from a couple of years ago at, at full demand if we're in that situation. Um, we'll work with DOT though. We may have to still do some counts, but. Um, the, the, the emergency signal was warranted. We just need to get a warrant for the full signal. Okay. So that's what this would do. But um, we'll have to work with whatever counts are available. Well, it, well, yeah. well, hold on a second. <laughs> if they do a count now, it's if, if, throw it away. If, I mean, exactly. Yeah. And if, if so, and again, I'm not pretending to know exactly what the what the uh, procedure or policy is. But if they want to count and we do it now. And it's way under where something needs to be. Now we're giving them the evidence they need to deny it. So I, so I want to make sure if we go ahead with this study that we don't get stuck with that. And we say, but, 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 but their, but their bureaucracy and red tape. So what, we, what we'll do is we'll look at using previous counts. Counts is one component of the warrant analysis. It's not the full. There's additional components. There's engineering judgment. So... We will hopefully be able to use the older counts, which are more valid of a full rush hour, for example. Yeah. We may need to supplement those at some point, but I think we work with DOT to not use yeah. right now. We we got to go with the back or yes. delay until we're back to normal behaviors. Yeah. DOT has given support for this project at a full signal, so I think they'll work with us. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I have one quick question. Uh, in the report, it showed 50 and 52. Right now, you showed 50 and yes. 52, but we're talking about 50. There's one study that covered both for the emergency signals. This agenda item is, is just for 50. Thank you. All right. I believe I had a motion, but for clarity, I think Commissioner Sachs, you make a motion on that item? Yes, sir. Okay. Do I have a second? Second. City Clerk. Commissioner Hartman? Yes. Commissioner McGurk? Yes. Commissioner Sachs? Yes. Vice Mayor Cloney? Yes. Mayor Owen? Yes. Thank you. All right, Commissioner Sachs, last one, item I. I. I just wanted to make sure, colleague, please. Uh, I had seen earlier that the basketball court over at uh, Pettis Park may have to have funding from CDBG, but when we last discussed it, it, w it wasn't really clear if we had everything together for the... Okay, please. Thank you. That's all. <coughs> Do I have a motion to approve item I? I'll make that motion. Do I have a second? Second. City Clerk. Sorry, can you give a second? Yes. Uh, Commissioner McGurk. Thank you. Commissioner McGurk? Yes. Commissioner Sachs? Yes. Vice Mayor Cloney? Yes. Commissioner Hartman? Yes. Mayor Owen? Yes. Thank you. All right. Uh, item 7A. The resolution would approve assistance under the find for uh, the Buena Vista Fishing Pier re repair or replacement. City staff, I think we need Kyle out there. <laughs> this is going to go down as the oddest re meeting in, in history. Brian, nobody's out there for any consent stuff still, right? No other staff? Okay. Okay. Faith, is that who you're looking for? All right, she's here. Come on in. That's right. So we're talking about the, the fine grant, the fishing pier. If you just want to give your, your report, staff report. Um, basically, there's, a, there's quite a bit of detail in here. That pier has deteriorated significantly. Uh, we've had our city engineer, our marine engineer, and our building official all look at it. We feel that it should be closed immediately. Um, we also looked at the possibility of, you know, replacing the cross bracing along there, but we've been warned by a marine company that if you did that, the pilings are so insecure that you might not 
even have a place to reattach them and they don't don't feel it would work so it's an extreme measure I know but we are recommending that it be closed um, trying to you know not to say the wrong word but to band-aid it to you know to try to keep it open I don't think it, I personally think it's a safety concern so there's a possibility of going to the fine grant and the one that we were recommending um, the cost to the city is a pre-agreement engineering expenses. So the cost to the city this fiscal year would be $43,800 if we went with that option. And then you could apply for the, you would fund the remaining portion um, in your new budget year, which would be $340,000. It's, it's a significantly expensive peer to replace. Um, the total project is $698,400, including engineering fees. That's the estimate, if I missed something. <laughs> so if, if I may, and Kyle, you probably can answer this, but if we closed it now and, let's say, we went through this whole process with find from, from today to reopening, what kind of a timeline is, is that? You're looking probably about a, a year. A year, a month, or two months, because you submit in March, and you won't get the agreement until probably November, and then you just have to put it out to bid. So you're looking at almost exactly the same time as now that you'll be able to start construction. But I just want to point out one thing that that Brian and I went down to the to the pier. We looked at it. The only thing that we could not see is the bottom of the pilings. Um, so when they do the design, we might have we might save some costs if we could save some of the pilings because they might you might have some few that they're not that good. But but I overall I think it's I was thinking if we do the bracing on it, if the pilings were good, we probably could save maybe a year. But the concern that I have is we couldn't dive to see the bottom of the piling. So that's why I supported the recommendation with faith to go ahead and submit the grant. Okay. Questions, Mr. Mayor, comments question? from the commission, yes. Commissioner Sachs. Khaled, the small pier to the south, adjacent to the playground, that's serviceable, right? Yes. And we'll have to use that one, I guess. That, that pier, the decking and everything was replaced no. oh, as okay. the um, hurricane effort, really effort. Very good. That was replaced in 2017, I think. I believe. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You expect people to fish from the bridge instead? <laughs> They're not supposed to. Right. <laughs> I don't I think I've seen lately anybody from the from the North Causeway Bridge fishing. They might go to the side. But. Would the state be responsible to place a sign if they had to? About okay. fishing off the bridge? Yes. Yeah. Commissioner McGurk? That was a <clears throat> fishing off the bridge. That's a pastime in this community. I can't yeah. believe we can kick it <laughs> So we'll close down the, the, the pier. The pier will, the structure will still remain for the time being. And they can shore fish, correct? Is there a place where they can shore fish? There's not really. No. Not through there. Mangroves. Well, they're fine. Okay. Well, mangroves, they won't, may not find their way, but if it's just rocky, they may find their way out there. They kind can of like shore off, off the pier, but not on the pier itself. No, no, no. what I'm saying fish. is shore fish towards yeah. the structure. Okay. There's not a lot of shore that's available. Though. I can t I've, I've waded out there and done some wade fishing through there, and it's it's not. You, okay. You got to get out in the water. You can't because you get the mangroves on yeah. some of the okay on the side. So all right, I just I, I don't. If people do find a way to shore fish, I don't want to. You know, let's let's try to accommodate them. Thank yeah. you. Other questions, comments, Vice Mayor. Uh, I did take a trip on that pier. Um, I'm surprised we haven't closed it already because it is in poor condition. Uh, the pilings may be fine. Any repair attempt would be a waste of money. Uh, the biggest hazard I see right now is not the pier collapsing. It's the railings. If you have two people that get in a little pushing and shoving, they're going to go right through those railings. Uh, the decking's in poor condition. That I could tolerate. But with the railings, it's just a, uh, it's a bad situation. Uh, I do go down to that park occasionally. It's the closest one to me. And for one reason or other, I've always gone on the other pier. So I never looked at that one. 
Uh, so that's one thing I would like to see done right now. Now, as to submitting of the fine grant, as I read through it in your review, uh, you said there's a possibility that uh, once we do the engineering design, which I do support, that if there is a funding issue for next year, which really concerns me, that once we get the grant, we could conceivably ask for an extension on that. Well, Would we have to include the, bud the money in our budget now one way or the other? I don't know about extension, but what I was saying is <clears throat> by the time we do the budget, the budget is done in September. Hopefully by that time we know how the budget is because they will not give you the approval on the, the actual agreement until November. So you could withdraw before that. Now you cannot take the, <clears throat> the grant and then ask for the extension immediately. Typically what happens is when you're under construction and you have an issue that you could ask for time extension. So one way or the other, we're going to have to budget for the actual construction cost next year. And then um, if we do have a cash flow problem, that we could conceivably ask for it to be extended Hopefully, if into we'll the next year. Hopefully we'll do that before they go into their boards, before we actually have the agreements. I would rather to do that. I don't want to have before the agreement the and then withdraw it. Okay. Before we get the grant, is what you're saying, yeah. Uh -huh. As long as we're going to close it down, the other peer is there and it is available. Um, I could support the uh, the application at this point, but when it comes down to the budget time, it may be a difficult thing for me to support then. But I do think we should go ahead and uh, spend the forty-four thousand out of this year's budget, and then uh, at budget time, it adjusted. Okay. If we get it, we might not even get the grant. Who knows? So we'll, we'll see what happens. Thank you. That's it. Okay. Commissioner Hart. So, so my comment is, if we're going to close, assume we're going to close it, I would recommend closing it immediately. <clears throat> but we need to do it in such a fashion that they're not going to go around it like they did Esther Street Park. You know, they went over the barricades, they moved the barricades. So it needs to be in a fairly permanent type of a, a closure so that they just can't climb over it or, you know, go around a piece of yellow tape, something like that. And the second one, it, when I read through the documents, it references a 300-foot pier. Our consultant said 300 feet, yet the other said 480 feet. I'm sorry, uh, I didn't catch that off to check with them where we came up with the differences. Yeah, so <clears throat> we'll, we'll just, the okay. They have to do the survey, Commissioner Hartman, so right. when the survey would actually have the actual length on it. Yeah, I just would like to have a s consistent numbers when we actually apply for the grant. So if you'll just have those two things checked. Thank you. So um, we, we're going to take a motion on the resolution. We got everybody's comments on that. We're going to take a motion on that. Do you need a motion on closure, or do you want uh, do you want that just so that you're yes okay? So for clarity, let's just take a motion on the closure of Buena Vista Park. Uh, effective as, as soon as feasible for staff to do that. I will make that. So, I mean, I'm sorry, not the park. You're, you're good. Thank you for that clarification. Motion to close the pier, <laughs> that the, the, the pier we've been talking about. Correct. Uh, I, I will make that motion. Okay. Second. I have a motion and a second. City clerk, if you'd call the roll. That's not for the grant. This is just for the closure. Vice Mayor Cloney? Yes. Commissioner Hartman? Yes. Commissioner McGurk? Yes. Commissioner Sachs? Yes. Mayor Owen? Yes. Thank you. Okay, now to the item of 7A, which is the resolution to apply for the find grant. Do I have a motion on motion that item? Motion to approve. Second. City Clerk, if you call oh, well, the Oh, sorry. One, com one comment. comment. I, I just wanted to say, um, regarding the budget, I think we all want to see the budget managed a tight budget. I know Commissioner Vice Mayor Coyote it says that a lot, but I want to give you guys kind of a heads up. If we struggle with the budget now to get what we want, and this is the start of a downturn in the economy, I can promise you, we struggle just to get raises or we struggle just to get um, first responders to accept a non-raise. So the reality of this is if we don't prioritize these things quickly, if we can't do this on a phenomenal top economy, 
we're absolutely never going to get this done in a declining or bad economy. So that's the reality. So I think that we need to ver choose very wisely what projects we do want to pay for. And when it comes to a community dock in a park that's sitting out there boarded up, I'm just saying you're going to get a lot of unhappy people. Thank you, Mayor. Okay. We had a motion and a second. City Clerk, feed call the roll. Vice Mayor Colodi? Yes. Commissioner Hartman? Yes. Commissioner McGurk? Yes. Commissioner Sachs? Yes. Mayor Owen? Yes. Thanks. Resolution 13-20 has been approved. All right. Item 8A, City Attorney. We'll read the ordinance by title only. And just as a precursor, <laughs> we did remove nine items off of your first readings so that moving forward we're not dealing with the advertising deadlines okay. and we'll take each one of these um, as it comes and explain what we've done to try to facilitate the, okay. this, this schedule so thank you <clears throat> ordinance number 2220 an ordinance of the city of New Smyrna Beach vacating a public access easement on private property located on Claremont Street and Fremont Street providing for conflicting ordinances and providing an effective date. Um, this is one that ha was advertised. We did reach out to the applicant and they are agreeable to a continuance. Brian, I'm looking at you, you reach out. Yeah, they do agree to a continuance. So we, in order to preserve the notice, we would need a formal motion from you all to continue to April 28th. And, and this is the one also, Commissioner McGurk, that you had last time you wanted to delay anyway. Oh yeah, you're gonna have some conversations. Okay, yeah, yeah, this Good. is the, yes, I'm, I, yeah. with that I'll make a motion to, to delay until the April 28th 8th meeting. Okay. Do I have a second? Second. Comment. I would rather push it to May. I mean, it's. it's I think that meeting is going to be a busy meeting. That's the 28th a is going to get point. busy anyway. If You think the May one's going to be busy too? Well, it's even conceivable that. Well, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but this thing. Did this issue has a lot of problems. I'd be surprised if they even came to us. We notified the applicant that our, our recommendation is now denial. They still would like for it to go forward at the next available date. It's not okay. urgent as far as our priorities. I, I do feel like the 28th is going to be busy, and if this one has, I know there's at least one person that spoke. I don't know how many people will be here to speak, but you had a motion as to you if you want to try well, to push yeah, it let further. Me, well, I'll, I don't want to ignore Hartman's um, request, but I think you're saying that the May meeting is going to be even worse. So I, I mean, I, I just think they're all, because you just heard her, they pushed nine items off of first reading, so those are going to well, come at us eventually. <laughs> Let me stick with my regular motion right. because it may not, it may just be, they may pull it or we, anyway. Yeah, let me okay. See. Had a motion and a second to postpone this item to the April 28th meeting of the city commission to a uh, city clerk if you'd call the roll on that item. Commissioner Hartman? Yes. Commissioner McGurk? Yes. Commissioner Sachs? Yes. Vice Mayor Colodi? Yes. Mayor Owen? Yes. Thank you. All right, item B, city attorney will read the ordinance by title only. Ordinance number 3420, an ordinance of the City of New Smyrna Beach amending the land development regulations. Amending Article 2, Definitions, Section 201, General Definitions, to amend the definition of kennel. Amending Article 5, Zoning Districts, Section 50402, Specific Regulations by District, B3, Highway Service Business Zoning District, to add kennels as a special exception. Providing for codification, providing for public hearing, providing for conflicting ordinances, and providing an effective date. So this is also an item that has a um, newspaper ad, a statutory display ad. In order to preserve that, we would need a formal motion to continue. The applicant was contacted, and he was here earlier today and or this evening. Yep. He is agreeable to a continuance. Brian, is he still here, or did he leave? We told him yeah. he could check it out on YouTube. Yeah. Um, but we'd be looking for a formal motion to continue this public hearing to a either April 28th or May First meeting, or whatever. Make a motion to continue to the April 28th meeting. Second. Okay. City Clerk. Commissioner McGurk? Yes. Commissioner Sachs? Yes. Vice Mayor Colony? Yes. 
Commissioner Hartman? Yes. Mayor Owen? Yes. Thank you. Item B has been continued to the April 28th meeting. Thank you. All right, item C. So a quasi judicial public hearing to consider the, consider the approval of a uh, plat. Um, this is, uh, will be approval and authorizing me to execute the contract. Uh, gentlemen, this is public, uh, uh, it's public hearing and, exp uh, so this is the time or yeah, quasi judicial. So this is the time for ex parte communications. If you've had any communications you need to disclose, now's the chance. That would include site visits, written communications, or discussions with the applicant. Uh, Commissioner Sachs, we'll start with you. Anything to disclose? I had none. 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 I none. none. And I have none as well. All right. Uh, we'll first hear from the city, Mr. Fields. <laughs> I do. Thank you. If you would state your full legal name, your education, and professional background, please, Mr. Fields. Brian Scott Fields. I have a Bachelor's of Science in Civil Engineering from the University of Maryland, a Master's in Business Administration from the University of Florida. My position is the Assistant City Manager and Director of Development Services, a registered professional engineer in the state of Florida. I have 25 years of experience in land development, engineering, planning, permitting, and public administration. Any member of the audience or commission wish to question him on his qualifications? Seeing none, uh, we'll... Any objections qualifying him as an expert witness in the area of land development? Hearing no objections, he's determined to be an expert and qualified to give opinion testimony concerning these matters. Before you dive in, I just want to clarify the reason this item is not continued. I think we talked to the applicant and they uh, wanted this to go ahead and proceed at the earliest available date, which was today. So that's why that's happening now. Uh, Mr. Fields, are you familiar with this application? Yes. Uh, please state whether it's consistent with the comp plan and share your recommendation. Yes, it is consistent with the comp plan. The recommendation is for approval. I have just a, a brief overview of, of some of the content. Um, the applicant is GSM Capital. This is the final plat approval for Coastal Woods Unit D. It's a, a 242 single family lot subdivision within a 143 acre area. This is the last residential subdivision in the Coastal Woods development. It's the northernmost um, area of the site, which encompasses Unit D. Um, follows uh, previously platted phases A1, A2, B1, B2, and C. Um, the average lot size, excuse me, the min minimum lot size is 5,622 square feet. Most of the lots are 50 feet wide by 125 feet deep. Um, the applicant initially submitted um, the application for this in 2018. It was heard in June of 2018 by the technical review staff. I eventually went to the Planning and Zoning Board on November 5th, 2018, when they recommended approval by a 6-0 to zero vote. There were four conditions attached with that approval. Um, those have since been met. Um, first was that it be approved, all comments be approved by the TRS staff. They have been by all departments. The traffic impact analysis had to be reviewed and approved by the city's consultant. That has been completed. Uh, a re review of the plat had to be completed by the city's independent surveyor. That has been done. And then finally, a right turn lane on Gibraltar Boulevard to Sugar Mill, Dr Mill Drive is had to be constructed with this project. Those plans are included as part of these plans. The right-of-way has been dedicated. That improvement is part of the site work for Unit D. Um, additionally, just um, as the Commission knows, last year uh, we adopted uh, new construction site management standards. Those will apply to this project, so you will see a direct impact on how development will look different for this phase compared to the other coastal woods phases. It includes construction fencing, material storage and stockpile requirements, um, regulations on work hours, dust control, dewatering, sediment control, construction access, parking, and things of that nature. Um, and in addition, just for the record, no burning is permitted on this site. Um, Volusia County School Concurrency has been certified. Um, a plat contract has been signed by the owner. Um, and I, I handed out a section from our LDR on, on the detailed plat requirements in sections 1007 through 1009. Um, that is what staff reviews. All of those requirements have been met. Um, so for those reasons, uh, staff recommends approval. Okay. Any member of the commission wish to question Mr. Fields on his testimony? I have a question. Sure. Is there anything specific as to when the turn lane is going to be installed? 
has to be completed with the overall site work. So the site work would not be accepted, which has to occur before we can CO any unit. So all the roads in Unit D plus this turn lane or one project has to be done before any unit can get a CO. Thank you. Any other questions from the Commission? Mr. Sachs? Yes, Mr. Mayor, thank you. Brian, I have to tell you personally, I highly value your work for the city, and I normally try to defer to the expertise of staff. Sometimes I do take issue and feel the opposite. Having no expertise, though, these are personal opinions. Um, two questions. The traffic impact analysis came back, and I just don't see how 44 Pioneer Trail can accept all of this traffic. Since 2015, have there been any changes that would make this more palatable? So the primary off-site improvement for the project is the widening of Sugar Mill. This is for the overall coastal woods. And that widening of Sugar Mill from 44 to the multifamily site, I don't know, we're going to have a map in front of us, is required with what is now the Advent Health property. So that's the major off-site improvement. Now each phase has individual driveway improvements and turn lanes and improvements on State Road 44, um, mostly with the commercial projects that front 44. So that was the outcome of the overall traffic impact study was the widening of Sugar Mill. And that was a county determination that that was needed. Okay, thank you. Um, another question is stormwater and its retention and movement uh, as, a, as a sheet, basically, or directed through culverts. Um, there have been previous complaints that a lot of the water from the Coastal Woods development area has moved over to Isles of Sugar Mill. And what I had viewed was a ditch, basically. What will be provided for the new development, and where will those waters end up, please? I'm going to ask Kyle to address that on the stormwater side as far as the, the Unit D stormwater system. Um, while he's coming up, I'll, I'll mention that the one of the um, concerns has been flooding on Pioneer Trail. Um, a design has been prepared to address that. That is included as a part of the county's right-of-way utilization permit with this project. So that repair will be done in conjunction with these improvements. But I'll ask Kyle to step forward maybe to address your question specific to the Unit D stormwater system. Yes, and I'm sorry, uh, Brian, while you're still there, you did mention another issue, Pioneer Trail. Was that project not shut down because of water that was flowing over Pioneer Trail? Wh which project? The, the last phase of the development. I'm going to let Kyle address that as far as... Okay, thank you. Kyle, if you can step up and carry all, that's where you're in. Yes. Okay, with regard to the Pioneer Trail, uh, there were some issues uh, with standing water. It's mostly for the westbound traffic. Uh, there's been a redesign. Uh, essentially what they're doing is widening and deepening uh, drainage, uh, swales, ditch line on the north side. And what they'll do, they'll capture and then convey the runoff. They'll actually take it, and there's going to be a grass weir or overflow structure, and it'll continue eastward. So it'll continue east in its current drainage pattern. So that's the proposed design, and the, and the, the, the county uh, did meet with the design consultant, and they wanted to have all these issues resolved, or else the county would not issue the right-of-way use permit. So Unit D was not allowed to connect to Pioneer Trail, either temporary construction or their permanent connection. That's what was being held up by the county. Okay. With regard to the storm management system, Unit D has its standalone uh, St. John's permit, so any impacts to wetlands have mitigated. Uh, they have contained the 25 year, the 124 uh, hour, 100 year storm event. So that's all self-contained and the discharge is not going to go eastward. It's not interconnected with B1 or A1, uh, storm water management system. This discharge will actually go west and it has to rehydrate wetlands between unit D and 95. So it's not gonna, uh, exacerbate or create any additional problems with the Isles of Sugar Mill subdivision. Yes, I, I believe I did notice west wetland to the west of the project. Is that correct? A that's right. That's what the hydro. That's what I mean. It has to discharge yes. has like a, an orifice or a normal water level 
and has continued to feed water into that system so it doesn't dry up the wetlands. Yes, uh, as far as hydrostatic pressure in uh, fire plugs, hydrants, do you see any future problems with providing enough pressure for such a volume of homes? It's actually a separate project, um, um, which is different than Unit D. There's actually a standalone project being performed right now with uh, GeoSAM and the Utilities Commission, and we have signed off on it. It's not part of the site plan, but it does continue, increases the, the water main size along Pioneer Trail. And that's interconnected to Coastal Woods. And I just want to enter for the record, uh, maybe staff can answer. Uh, there were discussions with the Utilities Commission, and they were going to defer infrastructure payments. The, the, can you speak to that? We, oh, no, I cannot speak with that. Okay. That was a concern, because if they go under, who gets stuck with the payments for the infrastructure provided? That's my question. And my last concern, the last concern is the most important, is public safety. We're short right now, and we're going to provide 200 more homes. It's difficult for me to swallow. Thank you for your time. Thanks. I just wanted to remind you all to, to look at these requirements that Brian has set forth to you, and that is your <coughs> review, review criteria. Survey accuracy, monumentation, lot and block layout, easements, those types of things. Because this is just approval of the plat, just the, the layout of what's going to go where, basically, yeah. Right. Thank you. Okay. Um, we'll have any questions from the applicant for the city or any presentation the applicant would have at this time. Just don't touch the podium. <laughs> Thank you for your patience with all the shuttling in and out. Hopefully you could hear out there. Thank, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Um, for the record, my name is Scott Glass. I'm a partner in the law firm of Schutz & Bowen. My office address is 300 South Orange Avenue, Orlando, 32801. I'm a board certified specialist at city, county, and government local, I'm sorry, city, county, and local government law, uh, certified by the Florida Bar, have been for a decade or so. Um, a former city attorney with the city of Orlando, uh, and I have uh, served a couple of terms as a city commissioner and mayor pro tem in a city about this size in Orange County. I've uh, been in local government law for over 30 years, and I've never run into something like this pandemic. So I appreciate you all uh, hearing this this evening and the extraordinary situations that you've uh, found yourself in and ensuring that my client and the public at large uh, receives their due process. Um, it's not an easy task, and it's very much appreciated by myself personally and by GeoSAM. Um, other than that, I just want to say we uh, agree with Mr. Field's uh, testimony and the staff recommendation. Uh, it constitutes under uh, existing case law and statutory law in Florida, competent substantial evidence, uh, and uh, David Shahenian and uh, Nick uh, Crowell are outside if you have any questions for them uh, or I'll do my best to answer any questions if you have but we support staff's recommendation we thank you for hearing this this evening and we'd ask for approval okay thank you any questions from the Commission of the applicant seeing none um, we'll hear from no members of the public submit anything on this item either, I'm imagining? No, sir. Okay. Um, all right, so that skips all of that. Um, okay, uh, so if no further questions of the applicant or of staff, we'll hear closing remarks from the commission. Vice Mayor. Uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, this is a project that uh, was approved a long time ago. It was designed in accordance with those standards. I find those standards to be inadequate for what we now feel would be a proper way to develop this property. However, that train's left the uh, station. So really, uh, I see no option other than to approve. Okay. 
Any other comments from the commission on this item? Right here, yeah. Commissioner McGurk. <clears throat> so I agree with some of what Vice Mayor just said. When I when I discuss the issues I have with front yard setbacks and I've been mentioning this for years, this is a good example. So when I met with uh, staff on this issue, I specifically said this is an example of where we can't change legally what has happened here with this development agreement. However, if the commission stood united on specific issues, although Vice Mayor did not allude to what standard this does not cover, we can see if we have a united front on some of these issues that we're concerned about, we can do one of two, we accomplish two things. Number one is we can try to encourage, although cannot force, an applicant to make some changes. There is no incentive to make a changes if the commission is not unanimous or has not taken a position on these new issues. The second thing is we would have something in place for when new MDAs come through dealing with some of the issues that we have on these new subdivisions that we've seen develop. So I mentioned it many times and I use this as an example as, well, we may not have been able to get them to change, but if we had a united front, we may be able to get them to concede some change, some changes. Thank you, Mayor. Okay. Any other comments on this item? Uh, question. Just a quick one. Uh, since we did have a change in the ordinance to comply with construction sites and containment of dust, dirt, um, other materials, does the applicant not have to come back and start the process over again? No. This is for, that ordinance applies to new building permits. So just doesn't apply retroactively. Okay. Thanks, Brian. So they do have to be compliant with it, yes. which you said earlier. But it doesn't start them over their entire process, doesn't start over, because it's a multi-year planning process, to, to Commissioner Clody's point, or Vice Mayor Clody's point, this started many moons ago. Commissioner, we're going to have a, to, to build on what you were saying is, I mean, was there something specific in this one, or you're just saying for future projects like this, we... Yeah, so, you know, these are plat these plots are small. Yeah. They're, they're 50... You know, I what they say roughly five thousand square foot. Yeah, Those are tiny lots. Yeah. So that gets into the whole discussion that I've been kind of harping on for years now about the smart growth strategies and clustering yeah. and we have these tiny little uh platted developments with fifty fifty foot fifty foot lots, um front yard setbacks that and side yard setbacks that I think are inadequate. Um so we've bounced it around, we've talked a lot about it. We've never really cohesively come together on some ideas of, of changes that we can make, but it dovetails into or segues into a bigger issue of um, going into those smart growth strategies and changing them, which the county is changing, wanting more of a grid pattern as opposed to a bunch of cul-de-sacs with one ingress and egress out of a big massive subdivision. So th in this case, I would have like to be able to challenge the applicant to say hey look we know legally we can't change this this is part of an mda that started with the county many moons ago which we adopted and brought into and brought into the city by annexation we made it better but if we said hey look you have all your other developments that have met that criteria how about redoing this one a little differently and it could have been even possibly a test case of, of something. But it, it would take us to have been able to, you know, identify and at least get a, an agreement, a majority agreement, on what we don't like about a development like this and maybe kind of plug and chug. And be, with all of us up here, I think we all have a lot of really good ideas. Yeah. I know of Vice Mayor's expertise and some of the engineering aspects. So that's what I was getting at. Yeah. In other words, yeah. if the sooner we can get to some kind of agreement on this, we may be able to apply it and 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 see what that gives us. Thank yeah. you, Mayor. No, it's it's well said, and I, I agree with that. And I'm, I'm, I think we were kind of heading down that path of having some of those conversations about smart growth and all those other things. And I think we did some of that at that workshop we had. So it's going to take some more conversations because certainly things like this I and mean, we we all know the the um some of the views in the community and, and and the disconnect is you know 
the changes we're making, some of the proactive changes we're making, even those things you just talked about, if we can get those codified, the, you know, some future commission is going to get to take credit for that is the, is the harsh reality. Because as stuff comes out of the ground, it's going to look right. different than current, and it's going to have changes based on what we know today. But those are for projects that are being approved today that could come out of the ground way later. So it's... That, that's the tough that's the tough part of approving something like this but the reality is I think what uh, city attorney has advised us is and, and, and you heard the the applicants attorney as well I mean essentially you know the, these become legal proceedings this becomes you know we're acting as as judge and jury in a way and it becomes about did they meet the evidence like that we, we gave them however many criteria did they meet it and if if the answer is yes then you know, there's, right. our hands are a little bit tied, which is a little bit frustrating as elected officials. For the public's benefit, you know, there's always this view that well, you can just say, you can just say no, and you know, I can give you a few examples where we said no and been challenged on that, and that that can get costly as well. So, all right, with that, is there a motion to adopt application number S-7-18? and to authorize the mayor to execute the contract for plat recording? Motion I'll make that approve. motion to approve. Second. We'll take Vice Mayor's motion to approve and Commissioner Hartman's second. City Clerk, if you'd call the roll, please. Commissioner Hartman? Yes. Commissioner McGurk? Yes. Commissioner Sachs? No. Vice Mayor Coloni? Yes. Mayor Owen? Yes. Thank you. All right, application number seven, uh, S-7-18 has been uh, adopted. Thank you very much, Mayor, Commissioners. You all stay safe. Thank you, you too. All right, item D, Ordinance 21 20, second reading of public hearing, which, if adopted, would amend Chapter 2. Is the idea that we actually go through this tonight, Carrie, or are you wanting this to be pushed out? I think this is pretty non controversial, so okay. I'd, I'd encourage you all to hear all right. it tonight. Um, ordinance number 2120, an ordinance of the City of New Smyrna Beach, amending the Code of Ordinances, revising Chapter 2, Administration, Article 2, City Commission, Section 2-53, to increase the notice required for special meetings. Providing for public hearing, providing for conflicting ordinances, providing for severability, and providing an effective date. So this came up during charter review. Um, our code currently states that all special meetings have to have at least 12 hours notice. There was a, a case within the last couple years that you should have at least 24 hours notice, but preferably 72. So what I've done is I've changed our code to have that same standard in there, and I've also clarified that this um, does not apply to an emergency okay. meeting. These are special awesome meetings. Question. Okay. Any public comments on this one that came in? No, sir. All right. Um, any questions, comments on this? If not, can I get a motion to adopt Ordinance 2120? I'll make that motion. Second. Okay. Uh, City Clerk, if you'd call the roll, please. Commissioner McGurk? Yes. Commissioner Sachs? Yes. Vice Mayor Clody? Yes. Commissioner Hartman? Yes. Mayor Owen? Yes. Thank you. All right, let's get through boards and commissions, and then we'll come back to kind of a plan for the next few weeks, talk about the events, talk about our meeting, if that's okay with everybody. So item A looks like we had a resignation of Kenneth Bohannon. Uh, is there a motion to accept that resignation? No so move. Second. City Clerk. Commissioner McGurk? Yes. Vice Mayor Cloney? Yes. Commissioner Sachs? Yes. Commissioner Hartman? Yes. Mayor Owen? Yes. Thank you. I believe that was your appointment, Commissioner McGurk. And just so we're clear, I think how we did it the first time, we'll follow this time, is it's his appointment to make, and so there's no vote that's necessarily going to be needed. We just need to hear that appointment if you have one tonight. So I, I don't have an appointment tonight. I've reached out to a couple of people. A couple of people uh, one, of, one, one person indicated they don't have an interest due to the gatherings. Um, so I was going to put this before the, before the commission. My understanding is there's only two or at most three meetings left. In this charter review uh, so therefore if the Commission um, doesn't have a problem with it I will probably choose not to try to fill that vacancy carries do you have any concerns with that before we um, speak I don't actually uh, Marilyn had sent out she's starting her final draft of everything they did move through the entire charter as it's in the um, as it exists in our code, so they did get through all of that material. Uh, the only thing remaining are items that people want to add. 
Um, so really the next step, depending on how this pandemic affects our meetings, is that piece and then you all sitting together. So and, and going through what the recommendations were. In hindsight, I wish we had, you know, this seat ended up, I'd offered just for the clarity, I'd offered to have one less. We ended up with me having one more. I wish we had had that as an alternate member that could have been voted on by all of us and plugged in. So if we ever do it again, we'll, we'll know for next time. But I have no issues with that. I, I think it makes sense. It'd be hard for somebody to get up to speed at this point almost. So it seems like it'd be more of a distraction than anything. So yeah. Um, and, and with the way they've been taking votes, and those of you that have been here can come, have been at the meetings can comment, you know, they're really not, there's no chance of a tie. We were concerned with that having an odd number, but there's really no chance of a tie, I don't think, with how they've been doing it. So any concerns or other comments on not leaving that going filled? I'm here, I'm seeing no concerns. Bye. All right. That is done. Okay, next item up is... Um, Uh, you know, response to ongoing current events, pandemic, whatever, however we want to phrase that. So um, I'd suggest let's kind of go through it like we did last time. We've got um, events that are city events. I think we've canceled all of our meetings and everything through the end of March, right? And so what about other public meetings, you know, neighborhood council type stuff? What about starting now? into Because we don't meet again unless we do an emergency meeting. We don't meet again until April 14th, in theory, right? Everything that you cancel is up to the end of March. March. So we need to talk about meetings in April. Okay. That's as far as meetings. Yep. As far as special events. Let's get, hang on, let's, let's get through. Events, I'm just going to give you, so this way you, you don't have to look at the whole thing. Okay. If you look at this, the sheet right here that I emailed you today and I gave you a copy of. Yep. The only thing that there was an update at almost 4 day this afternoon, um, the, the NSB Wine and Food Fest, that was canceled. Okay. So that's a good thing. Yep. So, and then you got, obviously, the sport complex, the whole entire month of April, that needs to be discussed. Okay. So for our public meetings that we hold, our standard kind of business, with the exception of the commission meeting, um, we could go until, yep, thank you for pulling that up. So we could go the month of April. Um, I would probably go the month of April. I'm just kind of winging it here. What's anybody else's thoughts? Jump in. Commissioner Hartman. I, I thought we had one thing with special magistrate tomorrow. Is there, <coughs> did we decide to cancel that? Because we weren't sure if there were some legalities oh, with that, notices. And I think you're right. Uh, Okay. Got of that so okay. we're good. All right. All right. So any concerns with canceling those, canceling all of these meetings you see before us, um, with the exception of the city commission, we'll talk about that next. Any any concerns with canceling all of those through the month of April at this point? Is there anything pressing with planning and zoning that can't be pushed back? Okay. That was my only question. Got it. Okay. All right. Um, what about the city commission meeting? Keep. We could keep the one on the 14th, but authorize Khaled and myself to, you know, evaluate current events and cancel it if needed, if it doesn't seem like the right thing to do, or we can also hold it remotely, which we have to vote on, right? Yeah. So, yes, I think, it that, scheduled and I, I think that we can schedule it. We can cancel it if we need to, depending on what the circumstances are. And if we can do it remotely, that would be good, too. Yeah, and at that point, if we're doing it remotely, I'd say it's literally just a it's almost an emergency meeting at that point, it just just to talk about current events. Um, so keep the two regularly scheduled commission meetings, not the workshop, not that April 28th workshop event, I would say, just the two regularly scheduled meetings, and then we'll make a game time decision on the 14th. Any concerns or additional thoughts on those for the public meetings? Well, I, I think we should keep both meetings in April. Okay. Uh, most definitely. Okay. Mr. Mayor? Yes. We have a charter review committee meeting in April. We do, April 16th. Would it be possible to convene that meeting and request to see if they would like to be in a meeting or if they don't feel like attending and get a consensus 
Because I they mean, only have a few left. Yeah. My concern is with this. I mean, current CDC guidelines are, are 10. We've floated around 10 tonight. There are a few times we were at 11 or 12, but this is a big room, so I felt comfortable with that. Um, that one sits, I mean, it's, what is it, 10 members plus the staff that would have to be there, so it's the same thing. If it doesn't um, comply, I wouldn't ask them. And, but and, I, and a lot of them are, uh, and uh, don't get me careful here, but I think several, at least, on that, are, are also elderly, which are governor's guidance today was for the 65 plus to shelter in place so I, I think attendance might be an issue but I agree with the mayor although I wanted to know how the mayor was going to state that the first go around <laughs> <laughs> I just about stepped in it <laughs> they also have one for April 23rd would we want to hold that one until we could keep that one to talk about it on the 14th because you know who knows where we'll be by then yeah so is that amenable to everybody yes okay so we'll leave 23rd as pending cancel the fifth 16th one definitively just for planning purposes everybody okay with that i'm seeing at least yes three yes. nods all right um do we, so we'll just keep going and we'll kind of make a motion at the end of all this to keep us on the same page. So now if we think about these the, these leisure services events, it looks like we had a wedding on the 25th. That one's still on for now. Boy, I feel so bad. There's probably some that's, bride sweating it out right now. That's the only one that so far they have not either postponed or yeah. canceled. And that, I don't know if it's the same person. Somebody texted me and they asked me, hey, what's, what's going to happen? <laughs> What's going to happen on the 25th? Listen, I'm like, listen, I don't know. Listen, I'll, I'll give my flat-out opinion on that. It's a wedding. There's a lot of people that gather. They have a lot of fun. People come in from out of town. That's a good point. I don't want people from out of town coming in. That's a good point. Um, I, I, I know it's, it's terrible to have to postpone a wedding or re, redo it, but under the circumstances, my biggest concern for our community is people coming in from out of town, out of the area. <clears throat> so I would say I would support um, suspending that wedding in a That's city. Interesting. Everybody else on that list have canceled proactively one, canceled, except yeah. there's uh, 90 people on that one. Yeah, yeah. I can't. I can't support that, and I, you know, uh, feel terrible for the people getting married, but I'm just not comfortable. Uh, like I know it was the Woodard wedding on April second, Live Oak. That was the one that, or May second, that was the one that can't that had contacted me. So, so my only thoughts on that is, if, if for some reason this is a special date, or there's just they have to have this date, that if we reach out to them and say, can it just be the wedding party and no guest, um, let them have that date, you know to. To do a ceremony type of thing, small, cer you know, less than ten, and it, you know, and if they want to reschedule a formal thing or um, you know, like a wedding party or something like that, then we work with them on that. But okay, I mean, I understand what you're saying is they can have the formal ceremony and then the party at a later date. Yeah, essentially is what you're saying. Basically, I mean, if they would, yeah. if I mean, if, less than ten people. Yeah. That's what less I'm hearing. I mean, if they're committed to that date. Otherwise, right, I if they want, would if, if, right, if they want that way, I, I get what you're saying. Right. I, and I agree. If they can do it by 10 or less people, I'm okay with that. So, so let me actually just add to this. I took a note here. So the governor, just a few hours before our meeting, said I mean, he's, I mean, per governor's orders, restricting gathering of individuals, social and recreational groups even. I mean, he was talking about in your home. He's like, don't have a dinner party of 10 plus people. Uh, obviously, enforcement of that is is you know not possible but so i think what if we gave staff the direction of through at least the end of april no events are hosted in our facilities that are more than 10 people in attendance and that gives them the option to work with someone like this wedding party if they want to try to scale it down just to keep the day tie the knot have the party later uh we can we can we can do that and for those that are in early may i would just say you know we'll, we'll try to give you as much heads up as we can well, being a basic optimist, I think it's going to be over. But uh, I think May. we should, yeah. by May, yeah. I think we should be consistent in that we should cancel everything up till the end of April. It'll let people plan properly. Also, when you tell people they can have 10 people here, we're over the limit. Maybe we should tell them seven, but I'll leave that up to the staff. 
But I, I think we should cancel all the, those events. And the only thing is the uh, second charter review commission meeting. Which we're leaving as pending for now. And, and we'll, well, uh, we'll leave it on, basically. Okay. I would make a motion to that effect. All right. What before we before we get there, if you if you would. So, did we talk through everything else? So you got this other event schedule, all these other permitted events, things like wine walk. They've already proactively canceled that. Anything else we need postponed, canceled? So these are all these are all taken care of. All, the, all of these. The only one on a special event. If you go to the second page, you got the Easter sunrise service. They think that they might have a thousand people, and they are insisting to have it at that day. Staff has tried to talk to them, but uh, I don't think they have gone anywhere with them. Is is that a? We don't give a permit for that, though, do we? Yeah, it's a special. Per, it's a it special is a, event, and they got a permit from us. Is it on the beach? April twelfth. It's uh, yes, April the twelfth. What is the permit? I saw Nancy floating around up there. She can come in if she if you check her temperature. <laughs> All right. It well, says canceled. It says canceled. No, no, no. The one on the twelfth. Refused to. The blue, the blue highlighting. The second one. The second one. Yeah, not the salty church. The, the other one. Um, what exactly are we permitting? If they're held, I mean, if they're just on the beach. They're mainly on the beach, but they have things in our boardwalk area at 27th also. There's, like like, he said, like I said, there's a thousand people. They come from the condos. They come from... I mean, I don't think they're going to have a thousand people there, but I guess so. no way the condos is saying. coming. But I, I think the part that we permit should be canceled. The beaches I can't control, as I've had to say 5,000 times this week. Um, I, I would cancel. Do, do, if you have comments, feel feel free. Well, or go ahead. It's also staff with directing traffic and, and all of that, you know, with the police department. Yeah. So uh, my suggestion would be we we cancel the permanent part, and I would even go so far as to say I think maybe Kyle and I or one, one of the two of us could make a phone call to this, these folks and ask them for I mean, we we, we got to follow CDC guidelines, so I, I can't I, shut down the beach. But we, I'm not going to have cop, I'm not going to put our our officers at risk for for this. So that's my that's my thoughts. Any objections to that? None. Okay. All right. So that gets us through the end of April with all those events. So, um, Vice Mayor, you were starting a motion. If you can just put as much of that detail into it, so we have clarity on it. If you can remember it all. I, I oh, hang, on, hang on. We got one more. Just don't forget about the sports complex. Sports complex, all right. Um, none has been canceled, and none has been disapproved by you at this point. So all this April activities, they're on, unless if we tell them that it's not. So did we get a handout on that? Did I miss yes, it? Yes, it's, uh, if you look at the to the right half of the side. Oh, there. I see it over there. Got it. Yep, yep, yep. Thank you. So... It's on the right-hand side of the same document. I did the same thing. Oh. So it's like two. The it's like two sections. The gray line is the separate. The gray line. Right? The gray line separates. Yeah. So over to the right. So everything through March is canceled, or no? Yes. Everything through March is canceled. So we're looking at April. So the second page, the April events. We've got some. So all of those are on at this point, and nobody's proactively canceled any of those. And I can tell you, SVSC soccer um, that my son plays on basically listens to what we're doing. You know, yeah. so we, and, and that's a, uh, so, so I have no problem canceling this stuff. I'm not going to have my kid going out and travel on a travel team playing soccer games. Um, so I have no problem canceling sports complex. We can always, if if, if, if the if every if the sun, if everything seems to clear up and there's some. Uh, and, and we end up in a situation where we have, where we, where we, when it, we're in a really good spot, and we say, "Oh, okay, we're good now. That's great. Let's do that." But I don't want to be on the other side of that <clears throat> coin by yeah. disappointing people or 
having arguing people what we should or shouldn't do. So I think we should cancel everything at the sports complex for April until further notice. Okay, uh, to, until April. Through April. Through April, April, yeah, not further notice. Just okay. Um, any concerns with that? Any objections to that? Just for the motion maker, so we can try to get this done in one Agreed. one big motion. Well, All right. Uh, Go ahead. My motion was to cancel all of our activities and any other activities on our properties. So it was all inclusive, with the exception of the one thing being the charter committee meeting, because I think if that gets pushed off, then we're not going to have it on the ballot. The April 23rd charter. April 23rd charter yes. meeting. I still not have doubts meeting. as to whether we're going to get through all that in time. Yeah. But, uh, and that will be left up to them. You know, and, if, and, if and they if can't mean, have a quorum, then they simply won't have a quorum. Okay. So. Vice Mayor and also the commission meetings we're keeping on. So. Yeah. Yes, we're keeping the commission, two commission meetings on. And what I would say is, and our first meeting in April, which is three weeks away, we'll have, um, we'll have some pretty good ideas as to how long these conditions are going to last. And that would give anybody in May two weeks to plan or yeah. adjust their schedules at this point. But I think we got to set the example. Agreed. Um, Second. All right. So we had a... <laughs> Sounded like there was a motion. A, there was a motion somewhere in there. It was yeah. a motion. <laughs> Any, before we go forward, anything from staff standpoint? Do you need anything? Just to make sure they're all on the same page in terms of, you know, if an order comes out that nobody's doing anything, that call it or you can cancel the city commission meetings if that's what we need. I'll, is that I, I didn't that I don't think that was in the motion. I think it I mean no, it's passing comments it, at yeah. the beginning of this discussion. Yeah. So if you want to do that separately, something for you guys. Do you want to do that know. separate or do you want to put that in your motion? But, I do not want to put it in my motion. Okay. We'll just do that yeah, separately then. We got a couple other declarations here to do, so we'll do that. To clarify the uh, Brennan Center events the last included uh, and canceled. Included and canceled. Anything on city property. So all right. Yeah. City property, city permits. Wait a city second. property or city permits? For discussion. Okay. Babe James Center. Yeah. There's ongoing activities, so Which we've we been should ex discuss we've that. Been ex um, yeah. I don't know if you saw my, my uh, memo to the employees. We kept two, two things open. Babe James because we have some kids in that building, and then the golf course. So that's the only two things that it's open as far as city facilities today. I question Babe James being open, um, but how many how many participants do we have at a time in there? Um, Is it between twenty five to thirty five, and they separate them? But today, for example, Nancy was telling me we had eight kids. So. Yeah, I, uh, I I think we could leave it to the staff's discretion on that. Uh, as to how we can take a little extra care to keep them separated. Mm -hmm. I just think that uh, uh, not giving them a place to go might be worse. At least this way we can control what goes on. And, and believe me, that's what was in our minds when we discussed, and that's why we kept them open. Yes, I, I understand that. So that was a, it was a good decision, I feel. And I'm glad that that came up in that my motion does not include the Babe James program. The golf course. The golf course. How could I close the golf course? No, I'm saying <laughs> Babe James and the golf course. I understand. All right. So <laughs> let's, let, let's let the rest of the commission uh, saw some other looks on the Babe James. So I just want to make sure everybody chimes in on that if you care to. Close. Close. Unless there's a feeding program that can be modified there, I would close. You know, if there's an outbreak. At Bay James, and we're gonna people are gonna say you closed everything else but that. And I understand the problem. I'm I'm on the fence. I don't I I don't have I lean towards closing it simply because um, we need to be consistent, and this is very difficult on everybody. However, what do you do with? It's a very difficult situation. Are are the Sure, yes, come, come ahead. Um, speaking with Nancy, she's going to be follows, 
following what the YMCA is doing, and they're going to be doing morning fever thermometer health screening checks as well as on the staff. Um, okay. Just as far as for screening the kids to keep sure to make sure that healthy kids are coming in. Yeah. Is, is Nancy still out there somewhere? I get, but my concern is we know that this thing is contagious Before when the asymptomatic. Time. Yeah. Uh, and it, how many kids pick this up before we identify? And how many of these kids, I mean, I'm not sure a lot of these kids um, have a, a structure to home life. Is If they get sick, it might be a few days before someone turns around and responds to this. Actually, in, in iron, the irony of it is coming to the Bay of James and showing signs may be the closest they get to the quickest care they can. So... I'm not sure I'm helping this situation. Well, it's a tough one. Help, help me understand, because I'm with you all. I see the I see the pros and the I mean, yeah. Commissioner Sachs, I'm with you. Shut it down. But then I also know for some, this is you know, I mean, the governor the governor talked about it today. He's so this isn't necessarily specific to this discussion, but he said, look, as as this thing drags on, you you have other concerns. I mean, there's there's you know, many other things to think about. So, are there programs that are Optional versus th this is serving as um, you know the, the child needs to be there for some reason or another, and is there a way to kind of differentiate those, or have we already reduced it down to how many of them are after school, or help help us understand some of the what's happening? So the eight kids that are coming are kids that come all the time. Um, just and just to hang out, or well, they come to our after school. They are in our summer program. They're they're part of Bay James. Okay. Um, we are getting the lunches from Chisholm for them, um, and then the parents also sometimes bring the lunches also, so our family members do. Um, you know, we will do whatever is, the commission would like Is to do. their presence at the Bay James absolutely required? In other words, are the, are the parents, why are they there? I, they have nowhere else to go. So the parents... They'd, they'd be home by themselves. The parents are still working. Yeah. There might be one parent that's not working, but I can't attest to that. Yeah. I don't, think, I don't think we should go into those details. Right. Yeah, yeah, I don't want to get too deep, but I, yeah. But I, I can tell you that, you know, we have the gym, we have the multimedia room, we have the library, and we have the computer room, and we are separating them and, and outside. They are also outside. So. so we have, let's say, kids there. We go through another week. All of a sudden, some people are hearing, you know, well, my kid's at Bay James. So they're, they're still accepting kids. So the question is, okay, well, then it must be okay. I'm going to put my kid there for a while. Now I'm going to put my, this other kid there. How do we control this? What is a way that we can say, okay, can we identify the kids that absolutely have to be there and, and, and try to keep out? Others who may be in a difficult position, but on a case-by-case -case basis, we could do that. Yes. Can we limit? Can can staff reasonably limit to you know five to seven in each of those big areas you talked about? And that's a worst-case scenario. I mean, ideally, even spread out more than that. But and we'd never have twenty kids piled up in a room. I guess is what I'm is what I'm saying. No, we won't, um, and we don't. Um, and then the other thing is. When school, the virtual school starts, this is going to be a whole different ballgame. So, well, because they might use the computer lab, right? And there's a lot of kids there. I assume don't have the computers at home. Correct. Needed, and they're going to come to Bay James looking for that technology. So we don't know what we're <clears throat> going to face on that. The uh, I, I, Commissioner Armand hasn't so, even spoken so yet. So, are, are we teaching them personal hygiene along with all this? Oh, yes. They don't go into, as soon as they leave one room, they're... So we could you. be changing culturals for years to come by the children that we're dealing with today. I mean, that's yeah. how we did it in Saluti Paz. I mean, you taught the children and they take it home to their parents and, you know, you can change a whole village just through the children. So... Um, it, you know, it may have unintended consequences, but, you know, they may be a positive one. If if we can use that 
as a teaching moment also. So, but I agree. I think there needs to be a, a cap. We need to have a cap and we need to have a plan. If, if all of a sudden we start getting 30 kids dropped off every day, then, you know, we said that's it. We're, you know. What I would like to see is, Nancy, if you can identify the most desperate situations and let people know that the only reason these kids are there is because they really have no no other options whatsoever and if we can limit the cap if we can cap it off and you can keep them separated you know I, I, you can't leave a i imagine these kids are young home alone by themselves it's just that's going to end up bad we're almost guaranteed well and we're fortunate that our staff knows the families so we can we can learn those issues right away and we can cap it at 35 and just go from there 35 i thought we had like eight kids there right we now. have eight but i'm saying you asked if other kids came we could cap it if you want to cap it less we can do that vice mayor comment well there there is a motion on the on the floor uh, i would uh, if it's agreeable with the second I would exempt the golf course and the Babe James uh, from that, from my motion to close everything, but the other things I exempted. Uh, and I would say uh, we have a city manager, uh, we have an emergency director, and I'm confident that they will make a decision that if there is a problem, that they will address it. Uh, I don't, uh, we have uh, overriding uh, standards from the governor that apply to the state. And I'm, and I'm sure that if a problem did develop, that, that they could handle it. So I, I would ask the person who seconded my motion if they agree. Agree. Okay. So just for clarity, that was. Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> That's some life saving decisions here. Um, I would recommend, and you seconded the motion, correct, yep. Commissioner, uh, that we close both venues, the Alonzo Babe James and the golf course. Um, in consideration of public safety, it, it really makes no sense to keep anything open. I, I know there are cities around us that have closed every venue, parking lots, beaches, parks. I, I don't see any other way forward than to close so that that's my opinion. I haven't made a motion. Yeah. Or should I make a motion to close everything? Well, there's, a, there's a motion on the table for for these. Um, so, uh, yeah, the, the the baby James is is it? I mean, that's a tough. One. We've all struggled with it, and and it's going to be one of those that I, I hope we. You know, you hope you're making the right call because it, it could go could go either way because th there's. We don't have every situation of, of every child, but these to this is different than the sports complex. In some cases, these aren't these aren't optional or discretionary. This is this is a, a way of life. This this may be, um, you know. So I, I don't want to say too much, but there's, there's concerns on, on on both sides. So um, my suggestion would be this: we we had a motion, we had a second. Um, I'm going to restate it just so we have clarity on that motion. Um, We'll take a vote on that. If there are further measures you would like to make as a you'd like to bring up, we can discuss those. We do have a couple more things we have to, or we need to talk about. These two uh, a resolution or de and declaration that carries put forth. So the motion, jump in if I'm saying anything wrong, was canceling all events through the end of April. Through the end with of April, the exception of the golf course, Babe James, and the second meeting of the Charter Review Committee. And the two city commission meetings. And the two city commission meetings, yes. Okay. That was the motion. That was I the concur. second. City clerk, call the roll on that item. Commissioner Hartman? Yes. <clears throat> Commissioner McGurk? Yes. Commissioner Sachs? Sorry, gentlemen, no. Vice Mayor Coloni? Yes. Mayor Owen? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Let's check off these two declarations. So we got Declaration 2-20, which City uh, Attorney 
distributed to us. This is just extending the state of emergency. I think it runs concurrent with um, the county's state of emergency. And then we have resolution 1420 uh, authorizing virtual commission meetings. Um, and so, and this would really just be if um, if the clerk and the city manager basically would would call for this. So that would be we're, we're delegating it to the clerk and the city manager to make that call. So, do I have a motion to adopt? Do you have any comments? Additional comments on Declaration Two Dash Twenty and Resolution Fourteen Dash Twenty. You can do them both. At I was the just going to do. It. Can I do them both at the same time? I, I no. Think, um, we should do them one individually. All right. Do I have a motion on Declaration 2 20? So moved. Second. City Clerk, call the roll on Declaration 2 20. Commissioner Sachs? Yes. Commissioner McGurk? Yes. Commissioner Hartman? Yes. Vice Mayor Clody? Yes. Mayor Owen? Yes. Thank you. Do I have a motion to adopt Resolution 14 20? This is the emergency extending the state of emergency to run concurrent with the county. Of a motion. Opposite. Sorry. The first one was the. Um, oh, sorry. Virtual meetings. Yep. My this bad. Is the virtual meetings. Yep. Resolution fourteen twenty approving virtual meetings if called for by the clerk and city manager. Do I have a motion? I'll make that motion. Second. City clerk. Commissioner Sachs. Yes. Commissioner McGurk. Yes. Commissioner Hartman. No. Vice Mayor Coloni. Yes. Mayor Owen. Yes. Thank you. All right, I hope we don't have to do that. Having just a regular business conference is hard enough virtually, I can tell you. This would be a nightmare virtually. Um, okay, so Commissioner Sachs? Yes, sir. You had f further concerns, further measures. I, I feel like we can just talk through that now. What are, your, what are your proposals? What are your thoughts? I think we all understand the concern, um, but... My, my struggle has just been what powers we have as a city, and you know, I, I, Mayor um, Matt Surens, the former uh, Volusia League of Cities president, um, made a post today, and he, he basically addressed this as a small town. He said, "Listen, this is a little bit like trying to have a, a you know a section off an area of a swimming pool and and, and say, okay, we're going to put all this kind of water in this in this area of a swimming pool." If it's not a regional or state approach, all we do is to some degree prolong the pain that we're going to feel from all these other measures. So that's kind of where I've landed is I'm not saying whether it's needed or not. I'm just saying if it's not, you know, we can't build a wall out at 95. And so the transient nature, we get people to leave here every day and go to Port Orange and to land or wherever else. And so my concern has been we put our community on complete lockdown, which, by the way, the governor's called for many things. If people follow the governor's orders and the CDC orders, you wouldn't see a lot of the behavior we have. And so by that regards, I wonder even if we did do it, how much enforcement we could have. And you get into the legal questions of how do you enforce some of these things, what powers do we have to enforce them as a, you know. Uh, so I, can more be done? You know, should the beaches be completely shut down? I, call your county council. I, I, that, that's a... Yeah. Funny, I have. <laughs> I'm sure you have. I, I mean, I've, I've talked to them as well. I've, I've shared my thoughts and opinions. But to me, we're controlling everything we can locally. Um, anything, any further measures, it's going to have to be at least a county or regional approach. And every county is dealing with this. I mean, Orlando just did some measures, and the counties all around them aren't. And so they're, you know, anyway. So that's 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 my thoughts. But. I'll Floor is yours, sir. Mr. Mayor, I share your thoughts. Uh, considering uh, the consistency I'm seeing in the counties and major municipalities around us, they're closing all their venues. I, it's an extreme measure, and I hate to take it. I hate to take the joy away from anybody's life, but I'd sure rather they be living next month or their, any one of their beloved had passed away due to a, what could be construed as a flu by some. But these are strange times, and I, I say be prepared for the worst and hope for the best. So I would say take every measure we could, close all city venues. We've done that. We've right? done that. We didn't do parks. I, and, forgot. I was going to talk about good, parks. We you bring up a good question. Parks. To be honest, I would close parks. I would close city parking lots. Okay, so we have parks, we have parking lots. 
I think all other city venues, with the exception of kind of public service venues, that we've essentially shut down to the public in many ways. But anyway, carry on. So parks, parking lots. What other what other measures? I'm not saying we'll, we'll talk through those, but I just want to get it all on the table here. Boat ramp. Boat ramps. Okay, yeah. let's talk through boat ramps. I put that as parks, but okay. What other what other measures are you? I don't know what restaurants, bar, I, I understand that the state has closed bars and uh, pubs. Yes. Is that correct? So we don't have to worry too much there. I'm and glad that our restaurants, restaurants are still able to have takeout. That's, yep. That'll help just a little bit. But um, again, I, I would look to other major cities and take steps that they've taken because we don't know how, we have a small population and with so many visitors from from areas where we don't know how much of the germ does shed onto our population, mm -hmm. which is just seems so fearful. And of that age bracket that is most susceptible, I would say take as many measures as we can. Um, but just to, just for clarity, because I, I don't want sure. anybody leaving saying we, we, you know, I wanted to take some measure and, and, and we didn't take it. I want to make sure we get all the, the ones on the table. So I've, I've got all the other facilities. I think we just covered all the city events, et cetera. But parks, parking lots, and boat ramps. Is there anything I've, I've missed that we need to put on the table for discussion? Beach, we can't control. We, right. we all know that. We can lobby individually to the county council um, as to what they should do. That's their call. Um, if, I could, if, I, if we had billboards in New Smyrna, that's the billboard I'd buy right now. <laughs> I don't control the beaches. <laughs> I've had to write that email five million times. Anything I've missed? I, I think we're trying to do the right I mean, thing. It, act as if this city yeah. is our family. Don't act that way. They are. Yeah. Um, you know, one measure that I think the clerk sent out that Palm Coast did, um, which again is a much bigger city than us, because um, a lot of the things you see, and this is another thing I, I, I mean, I've taken this, is people email me, hey, the mayor of New York just did this. The mayor of L.A. just did this. And I'm like, look. That is the equivalency of Volusia County times ten or something like that. The even the powers they have are very different. They have an entire health department and team underneath them. They have, you know, the equivalenting what they did to what steps we should take as a city of twenty-seven thousand. Again, I, I don't even have the power. I don't have the expertise on staff. You know, those those are questions I have. But so things like, you know, calling for businesses to close. You know, I I, I don't even know that we can do that. Then there's the should we question. So, but just so we're clear, parks, parking lot, boat ramps, no other measures really that you're calling for. I would not want to close. Well, we certainly don't want to close stores, grocery stores, uh, medicine shops. Yeah. Okay. Things like that. And and you know I would encourage people to if they want to travel, go outside, do your business, come back home. Yeah. I mean, we're, so we're follow really, the. I mean, the governor gave really strict shelter in place kind of guidance. Yes. I mean, and, you know. and the only reason I'm going to that extreme is because again we're a small town, but our visitation is just tremendous because everybody else is closed all around us. Yeah, and unfortunately, I mean, I, mean, I, I can't. I don't think they're visiting here for our parks, maybe boat ramps, but anyway. All right. Other comments on. We'll just come down the line this way. So let's hit those three or anything else that you can think of that we missed. What are your thoughts on? So my biggest rub on this is people coming from outside the community into our community and then essentially creating a, uh, a problem that we don't already have. Um, I can be, I can certainly agree with Commissioner Sachs and shut down um, parking, parking lots, parks do, uh, I can do parks for a short period of time. I want to not. I want to. I want. I don't want to have anything that encourages people from outside this community. Generally speaking, Central Florida, Orlando, they're all sitting home looking for something to do. Yep. And when we when we have amenities and facilities open, we're encouraging them to come here. When I first spoke about this that first Friday that we had our first emergency meeting. What I was trying to communicate, especially to the business community, was think, think local, which takes that phrase that very popular with, with you, Mayor, um, that, you, that, that you, I don't know if you coined it, but you certainly have run with it. 
was we can sustain ourselves. But when we have people coming in from outside, it's a deep concern. So I don't have a problem stopping things that encourage people from coming in from outside our community, increasing the risk of this community becoming um, infected or more infected than it is. So for a short period of time, I can agree with parking lots, parks, and boat ramps. Okay. Vice Mayor, comments? Do you have a suggestion as to what a short period of time is, Commissioner McGurk? Uh, I, the, the, the Mark, I could say to the next commission meeting. 14th. Okay. This is a tough one. I like the idea that uh, some people, residents, do have a place to go. I know I went past Old Ford Park the other day, and I saw three separate groups of uh, 10 or less getting together. It gave them a place to go. Uh, I don't like taking that opportunity away from people. I see the uh, point of people from the outside coming uh, into the area because they do tend to overwhelm our facilities. Uh, the boat ramp is probably a perfect example. Everybody can say that uh, it's an outside area and they don't all get together. But they do go into the restrooms and they do drive throughout the neighborhoods. Their trailers are parked all over the place. So I can see the argument um, that we're enticing people to come in from the outside. And I can take this in steps. I mean, I don't need to do all three. I, I'm just saying what I can, what what I can entertain. Okay. Um, and I, so anyway, yeah. Will, will I, everybody comment and see if we have enough common ground to get a motion that would work, make sense? I, I obviously, or I, I was opposed to the idea of closing uh, all these facilities down. Uh, I would consider doing it for a shorter period of time. Three weeks is a long, is light years away, the way this virus is going. So uh, I could go with a shorter period of time, and I just wonder how we're going to get that information out to people who don't live here. <laughs> the press is one way. <laughs> They'll, these, I mean, the, the headlines are, will, you know, that's what helped the word has been getting out is the, the, the headlines. So people learned about the beaches, I can tell you that. And my colleagues, may I share with you, I have photographs of blocked walk beach walkovers yeah. and the beach proximity between the space of six feet is not heated. People are not obeying that rule. So, I, you know, if we take the extra steps, yes, it's dr draconian. Yes, it's cruel. Yes, I'll yeah. get a lot of heat, but I'd rather have my people yelling at me than the other case. Let's let Commissioner Hartman comment, and then I'll say a few words, and we'll see if we have some comments. So with there. that comment, being in the age bracket that I'm in, <laughs> I went to a local grocery store this morning who catered to the elderly, and they were lined completely around, almost around the building, shoulder to shoulder, waiting to get in. And this is supposedly the more vulnerable of our population, and they're not heeding the warnings. So, you know... Where do we stop? Or where, you know, I, I'm opposed to closing the parks. I think prudent people should have a place to go in the open air to enjoy some of the amenities. Same thing with the boat ramps. It, if they're coming from Orlando, they're cooped in their car, they get in their boat, they go offshore, they go down the river. If, I don't have a problem with that because they're in small numbers. Bathroom, we can close the bathrooms. I don't have a problem with that. But then we're going to have them, you know, you're going to have create even more problems with that. So at, at this given time, with the slow growth that, or infection that Volusia County has experienced, having just been through spring break, you know, and we only went up four, I think, the number of cases, and we don't know where they are, I think that we need... People need to have some kind of an outlet. There's just so much you're going to be able to do at home or in your yard or in your neighborhood. And 
and I would be opposed to closing all three of those at this time. Support for any of them or none at all at this point? Um, none at all at this time. Okay. Um, so my, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I am, one question I have is if we go this route, so boat ramps is, is one thing, um, parking lots is, is even, is even easy. Parks, how do you enforce that? I mean, are we going to? Somebody is, is is at Pettus Park or is at Manatee Park. What's the, you know, we got to give the guys and the guys and gals in blue some direction here. Are they just, you know, encouraging folks to leave? You know, the, the struggle with all this, and and I was talking to somebody earlier today. The struggle with all this is, you know, you look at our as America, some of the things we value, and it's, you know, Declaration of Independence, right? It's life and liberty, and and what we're having to choose right now is. How many liberties are we trying to clamp down on to try to preserve life? And so you're, you're <laughs> two of our fundamental life, liberty, pursuit of happiness stuff, we're trying to balance. And that's you know, it's not, a, not an easy spot to be in. But so things like boat ramps that we can control, I, you know, the, the, the argument that I've heard on boat ramps is, yes, once they get to the ramp and they're in their boat and they're out on the water, they're not interacting, but it's the... As they're coming in, they stop at the gas station. They, you know, it's the family that just landed from New York because there's 190 flights a day coming in, and so they just landed. They got off in Orlando, and now they come through here and they're standing in line for to go at Yellow Dog Eats, and then they go to get gas, and they go on Wawa, and and they stop at Publix for some subs, and then they get on the boat ramp. So it's not once they get to the boat ramp, it's fine. It's all those other things in the community. Um, that that cause that cause issues, and so I mean, same with the with the beach parking lots. I would say it's it's everybody else kind of funneling in um, to get to those. You know, the concern on the if we close the boat ramps, I think that you know that 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 solves the you know the people aren't going to they don't have access to the water, so that one will kind of solve. It won't create other parking issues. A concern with closing all the other parking lots around the beaches at least would be does that just push the problem into the neighborhoods versus actually stopping what we're trying to stop and you know I, that was a concern I had on when when you know the county was discussing closing the beaches uh, or, or closing the, the ramps rather to the beaches that was the concern the report that I've heard what I've heard is it hasn't been that bad I haven't my, my email hasn't blown up from people in the neighborhood in fact I got a compliment from somebody in the neighborhood so, you know, I don't, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm torn. I mean, you, you want to err on the side of caution. I, I would say for a short time, I think the next two weeks are going to tell us a lot. You know, we're, 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 we're about eight or so days out from bike week. We're only a few days out from spring break. So we, have, we don't know what spring break brought to us yet. Right. I mean, based on everything I know about this, I'm no, I'm no medical expert. Nobody up here is a medical expert. Um, and the reality is people aren't following the CDC guidelines. There's a, a swath of our population that are either, if they're taking it seriously, they're just not, it's just not connecting. They're doing things like what you talked about this morning. I saw pictures of the same thing. And, you know, we can't, we can't enforce common sense is the, is the problem. So, um, Mr. Mayor? I would support whatever, let me just be clear on this, and then we'll move on, and eventually we got to get a motion so we can all go home. Um, I would support whatever measures to put in place, whatever motion maker makes on those three. The parks, I would say, I don't think that's a huge issue. I don't think folks are getting in their car driving here from Orlando for parks, and I think it would create an enforcement issue for our officers. So I would be in, I, I'm not as in favor of that. We can put out, the last thing I was gonna say is, uh, City of Palm Coast, um, if you all had a chance to read that, they put out a measure that was, it's voluntary, but it's kind of a voluntary shelter in place. Um, and but the headline becomes city is calling for residents to stay to stay in so it kind of you know maybe we could do parks are voluntarily closed type deal so that i've said my piece i'll support probably whatever's put out because you don't want to be the person that voted no and then we have a huge outbreak but kyle comments yeah sure and then we'll come back i think i had you next jake and then we'll come to you i received a call from uh <laughs> 
Deputy County Manager this afternoon. Okay. Um, they tried to close car like maybe a third of their parking. This is like Hiles parking, whatever, thinking that that's going to maybe reduce the social distancing. That did not happen. They're thinking about maybe closing the parking lot completely. Um, I've talked to the beach, I mean to the chief yesterday. He, he thought about it. His recommendation is not to close off the parking if they're not closing off the beach. So I just want to make that perfect. Because what happened is, if the parking are closed, then we would have the issue with them parking in the neighborhood. Yeah, the, yeah, that's the concern. So, hang so on, Carla. Can we, can we actually close the ramp since we use fine money to build them? The boat ramp? About the, the boat ramp? The ramp, boat ramp. Well, yeah, I mean, it's as long as we are consistent and we're not discriminating, we're not saying, who's going to be president go and you not, we don't go. If we close it off completely for nobody, then you're fine. And I think at times like this, let's just be frank, I think we have a lot of top cover. I mean, the governor's made it pretty clear. He's supporting municipalities if they take measures like this. So I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable. I'm not so concerned about that, although I don't want to get in trouble. But All right, Commissioner Sachs. Yeah, just comments. quickly, Mr. Mayor, uh, you know, I don't relish any of this, yeah. and I wouldn't enforce this on people, but I would say here's our example. We're, we're trying to let you know that we really need to close some of these venues, because guess where people are going to go when they get off the ramp? They're going to Disappearing Island, and there's going to be plenty of spreading and shedding there. So I, I think we should set that example. Uh, the state has closed their parks. They've closed trailer parks and other parks. I think uh, Blue Spring is closed. Yeah, right, state parks, right? State parks are closed. Yeah, yeah so, geez, I... I mean, it's only a short time, hopefully, and, you know, we can, we can always come back from it, but let's err on the side of caution. I know nobody likes to do it, I'm sure. Commissioner McGurk, and then we'll come to you. He had jumped in earlier. Yeah, I'm not sure I'm going to bring any clarity <laughs> to this. Um, I don't think the discussion has led me not to want to close parks. The enforcement issue, I think, is be very difficult, and I do think people need to... Uh, I think that's a problem. I was, Colin answered my question about the, the, the beach clots. Uh, I would be very in favor of doing that, but I first would want to hear from the police chief, which I did indirectly through Colin, which is like, wait a second. We think we're doing a good, and police chief has got his concerns about that. So I think that that creates a whole new set of problems. Actually could make it worse putting people in the in the neighborhood so um, in the bow ramps it's a congestion my I guess until I get something a little more solid or more favorable to from from city manager or the police chief on how it would work for us to close the beach lots um, I would probably not want to do that tonight although I don't want to put words or words in your mouth. Am I putting words in your mouth? No. Okay. Um, I'm not in favor of voluntary. It's confusing. Yeah. I think during an emergency epidemic like this, we need to have very clear, decisive instructions and very headline grabbing whenever a city does this. But every, everyone's not understanding it. Yeah. So I don't want to do voluntary. We take action, we take action. I don't want it to be, we close this. Oh, no, it's, it was. And then a side note is it's voluntary. Yeah, good point. Vice Mayor, you had comments? Well, the primary draw is the beach. Yeah. And that is out of our control. Uh, just as a, a side note on the boat ramps, uh, which I drive past all the time because it's right near my house. There's, there's uh, piers there where people tie their boats up. I would say that almost on any given time on uh, Saturday and Sunday, there's at least 50 people milling around uh, on the, the various docks in the boats, putting the boats in, putting the boats out. Uh, I do think we should have a unified policy for the parks, our parking lots, uh, and the boat ramps. 
I don't think we should uh, separate any one of those out. I think we should be consistent uh, on all of them. Uh, at this time, as much as I would like to close certain of them down, I would be in favor of keeping them open. If the beach is closed down, I think I would look at it significantly differently. Uh, during that the first the first period of time, uh, I must say, from the people in my zone along the beach, they were split 50-50 as to whether they wanted the boat ramps closed because it was pushing cars into the, into the neighborhoods. Uh, uh, people did seem to get the message after a while, and I'll say that... Uh, you mean the beach ramps? The beach ramps. Yeah. That uh, as time went on, the people coming seemed to behave a little bit better and not park in driveways and all over the place. Uh, so at this point, I would... I don't know. I'm, I'm still in favor of leaving them all open at this point. I'll make that decision. Uh, I could see a short period of time, but then again, how short can you make it without confusing the heck out of everybody who's coming and going? So um, those are my feelings. So, gentlemen, I heard in favor of keeping it all open, in favor of keeping it all open. I'm not trying to put words in anybody's mouth. I'm trying to, for anybody that wants to make a motion, um, I had submitted I would, uh, you know, I, 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 these are tough, man. This is, <laughs> these are things that have, you know, never been done really in a, in a modern society. I heard the governor say today, and I, I echo that. It's a tough call. So, um, Mr. Mayor, how about a motion from me? Good. Uh, I'll make a motion that we close down our beaches. I'm sorry, beaches. I wish because I'm gonna the, come be back the to beaches that one. are yes, that is a problem. Uh, our parks, our boat ramps, and our parking lots. And just for my clarity, what kind of messaging goes with that on, on enforcement? So you roll up on a family in the park that didn't get the memo, or maybe they got the memo and they just don't care. What, what's the enforcement? What direction do we give? I would advise them that the park is closed due to safety reasons. And if people don't know by now, I think it'd be simple enough to put up a sign yeah. due to contagion okay. and the COVID virus. Uh, okay. We don't want to put our residents in danger. That, that's my fear. So if I can get a second. All right, so we got a motion to close parks, parking lots, city parking lots, not necessarily county. So there's, everybody's got to figure out which is which, and, and boat ramps. Had a motion. I'm not hearing a second. I think that one, I think that one a little, too far based on what I heard from the commission. I think there might have been some support for boat ramps is really the one that I heard some support around. So make a, I'm going to make a motion to close the boat ramps for one week. I'm not making a motion to close the beach lots, which would I'd be more in favorable to until we can get some better information on how we can it how how, how we would deal with the negative effect. Okay. Into the community. Um, just for clarity, in case it passes, effective, you said one week, effective date, end date. You want to put some clarity around that or figure it out after we? Yeah, let's go through one week for a weekend. Uh, starting Wednesday to tomorrow, the 25th. To it's going to be hard to get the word out by 8 a.m. tomorrow morning or 6 a.m., whatever the people start rolling out. <laughs> no, that's true. Well, it's, we have gates there, right? They're locked. Uh, uh, not not at most of the boat ramps. No, no, no. Some of them, I think, but not like the the one on North Causeway doesn't for sure. I'm seeing a bunch of nose heads. No. So I'd say my suggestion would be to the motion maker Thursday the 26th might be easier to get the word out. It still catches the weekend. Well, let me let me let me let me back up here because I think we're all well intended, but the question is how are we going to enforce that? Let me ask city staff. Colin, let me ask you: if we shut the boat ramps down, how would we actually do that? Do you, yes, how would we physically do that? Are we capable? What 
what are your concerns if I make a motion that passes to shut the boat ramps down for a week? If we close it down, I mean, the only concern is be with people are using it. But as far as closing it off, I mean, our staff will close it off right at the ramp. Put a the only thing is we, we just need some time okay. to put it out there because people, they go out there. What's, there a, the what's enough time? Probably Thursday, though, like the mayor suggested, would be probably a bit. Okay, well, how about this? How about... Well, the, I'm going to do Friday the 27th to April, Friday, April, well, Friday, April 3rd, but that opens it up right before a weekend. It might be a mad dash to come in that. I, uh, if I could add to the conversation, the, uh, the, the people are coming from out of the area and they're not going to know. And what are they going to do when they get here? <laughs> so what I would suggest is leave it open for this coming weekend, post it, that we're going to close it for two weeks after that. In that way, we won't have uh, mayhem when it, uh, when it does occur. It makes some I, sense. That, that's I, just a suggestion. I, I, I think people, though, I mean, I can tell you, I, I, I think people, if I leave my house to even go to a restaurant, I'm checking whether they're open at this point. I mean, I, I think people are, are, we're used to an evolving situation. So, the, the, when we did the beach ramp measure, or when the county did the beach ramp measure, you know, they did that effective the next morning for us, and that word got out really, really quickly. So I see the city attorney I, I know, standing yeah. up. Yeah. Okay, what's your comment? Not, not necessarily legal input, but if you're going to have an end date, I would line it up with one of your meetings, because if, if it ends on April 3rd and you guys don't meet till the 14th, you know, you're either going to call another meeting to figure out if you want to extend it. Or, or we give some delegated authority to the city manager. Would, would also be a lot of the other communities have done that just to be able to respond quickly as this thing goes but yeah that, that was kind of my suggestion uh, although I didn't state it that way but it would carry us through to that next meeting if we closed it for two weeks so we, we leave it open this weekend and mr. mayor I don't know how much experience you have with with day boaters they don't necessarily listen to the news they don't follow directions they show up well if they show up and the gates go and they can't get in there's nothing they it's not like they can carry yeah. the boat and stick it in <laughs> you know they, 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 they only have Correct. one option and, and, and i'm saying in, no, in normal circumstances but I'm, uh, what i'm saying is that to, this is not normal again I, i'm one of the guys i'm the same way but this is a time when you check like hey what what's still open mm -hmm. what's happened so well, all right motion maker was kind of in the middle of a motion we're We'll plan it pretty loose tonight, but I'll go back to your motion. I'm going to withdraw my motion at this time. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to think about this for a second. I don't. I don't want to continue this. This. Um. Okay. Well, I will. Uh, I, I will give a shot at it. Uh, as I suggested, that uh, we close it uh, effectively. After this weekend, that we post it on the site that it will be closed uh, until our next meeting, uh, whatever that date may be, 14th. in April. 14th. That would be my motion. So leave it open for this weekend. Uh, second for discussion. How do we, what about, the, what about the commercial guys? These are not the problems. How are they going to be able to get out and get their crab pots and all that kind of stuff? These are not the people who are coming in from outside the area. They need access. They got crab pots out there right now. So essentially that's merchandise that they have sitting there that's going to either. You're saying crab. Crab, crab. pot. Okay. Crab pots, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not what I heard the first time. <laughs> there was uh, one of the other counties did address that issue that said it, it didn't apply to commercial uh, fishermen. Yeah. So I, I, I would be agreeable to. I like that. that in there. It's how do you how do you get them in and out? How do how do we how do we how do I we? I mean, the barricades them? are just going to be like the little better barricades, right? I mean, how? You know, I was thinking about it just when I was sitting down. What what we could do is we we use the barricades that you get filled with water that we use to close the bridge. Mm -hmm. If we have enough, we could use those to do so. But then we couldn't move them to let the commercial guys. I mean, that almost creates this where we have to like man up. Yeah, you have to have yeah. <laughs> personnel. When you fill them in water, they're very heavy. Yeah. So, uh, if we have enough, that's what we'll use. Well, the question is, how do we let the commercial 
folks out there who have crab pots out there and you know in their they're, they're out there fishing if commissioner i mean vice mayor Kalodi is saying make it uh on say monday we will put the electronic signs out there probably sometime tomorrow and just put it out there and keep it out there i think what commissioner mcgurk is saying is even during the closure the commercial guys need access to it and they're not the problem they're not coming in from outside they're they're not the problem so is there a way that we can think of to give them access. I mean, it'd be difficult if we're just going to get back <coughs> to them because then you're going to have a specific staff just yeah. to do that. No, no, right. I, that's what I'm asking. I, I understand. It's, that's uh, one I mean, of the reasons I held back on the motion yeah. because I wasn't. I, I was trying to. Uh, yeah. And I think Edgewater, that access is being worked on, so I don't know if it's open. So one of the parks is, I know. Yeah, the one by City Hall, yep. I think it's under construction. Yeah, which is... You know, it's interesting, because you, you dig in all these details, and you try to actually do, you know, then you then you zoom out, and you, you, you read the headline from New York, and you think, we're, we're underreacting. And, right. you know, so it's... But yet, you try to actually do it without... You know, we're gonna get We're going to get a lot of calls from... Fisher crab, uh, you know Fisher. Um, thank you, commercial, commercial fishermen who are gonna, you know, they're gonna be like, "What are you guys doing? Well, how so, are we gonna get there?" So I, I'm I'm not a, an expert on our local waterways by any stretch, but is there is this an issue that exists at every ramp, or could we say at this ramp during these hours we have somebody there that basically is letting commercial get commercial fishermen, you know, have access? Uh, you know, could we could we? relegate it down or do they need to be able to put in at multiple points because they don't want to have to haul from one end to the other is what I'm guessing but no I think they can get around I mean, a little further for their trip but they can get one access point it would work if we said hey okay, you, it's a you it's show a up at swoop or you know pick the most central <coughs> one maybe or you know yeah there could be it could be on the uh, the east ramp uh, off North Causeway that's over by near yeah. Outriggers restaurant yeah. yeah for commercial use and I can't see us putting somebody out there to monitor them because they go out all hours of the night. I know that's the. You yeah, know, I see them out there. You know, how do they get, they drive on the beach still? I guess they just go in the out. Like how do they? Because I got some calls about hey, why are the commercial get why are there still vehicles on the beach? Which again, I remind that it's not my beach, but I guess they still have access to the beach via the. They go in the same way the lifeguards or something. So somehow they still get on the beach. Who's that? Commercial commercial fishermen that fish like shore fish sure. commercially. I don't, I don't know. I didn't know that was a thing. Yeah, neither did I. <laughs> I will uh, I'll clarify my motion. Okay. I look forward to it. <laughs> so do I. <laughs> the uh, boat ramps stay open through this weekend. That we post uh, the fact that we're going to close it until the date of our next meeting or the date prior to our next meeting in that commercial starting Monday starting Monday yes they will be closed and and through your direction you'll put our sign out there telling everybody that we're going to close it and commercial fishermen will see that and immediately call you up and say what am I going to do and we could direct them to the ramp by out outriggers that would be my suggestion Close it, close it for the, the two weekends in the time period from Monday till uh, the day before our next meeting, uh, excepting for commercial fishermen who go out in really small boats anyhow. So that it's not going to be the hardest thing in the world for them to get in and out. Commercial meaning guides or commercial meaning? Oh, there, there's guides. There's people that go out and they, guides. Catch, they catch bait fish. No, I, I know and I'm saying guides are... Store. You know, guides. people from Orlando that come over to go out with a guide. Yeah, we, we do uh, have... We can limit them. Yeah, I, I would say commercial fish. I mean, we're re we'd be drastically reducing the, the volume. Yeah. volume. Uh, yes. Okay. You know, just a suggestion. Maybe we ought to say that the specific time open for commercial fishermen. So we'll talk to some commercial fishermen and see what's the best time for them and give them a window, you know, between... Three o'clock and six o'clock, the east ramp will be open. It's not going to work for guides. 
No, I'm, I'm just, I, yeah. I didn't, the, the time is not specific. I'm just saying as an example. I mean, we'll just ask him and see what's, yeah. what's the time for them. I mean, if you're going to keep it open for fishermen at some point. Yeah. But just to say, use the east side, I mean, then it's, anybody else is going to be using it. I mean, who's going to be enforcing that? So. Right. Gentlemen, just to share, Canaveral sure. Seashore is closed. Yeah, as yeah it closed Thursday. last week. So. Yep. Was that clarification acceptable to the second? I, 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 <laughs> sure Nobody, what I we did, we didn't. I haven't heard a second yet. Yeah, I don't. Know I second it for discussion. Yeah. Um, sorry, I forgot about that. But I, but I'm not clear on what the what the uh, where we're at with the motion. I'll, I'll repeat it. Effective Monday, we close the boat ramps to all except commercial fishermen, and the period of time will run to the day before our next meeting day, which I don't remember. Well, let me ask you real quick: if we if they open up the day before our commission meeting, no, it'd be day. closed through. <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah, I was about to say. I'm going to second that motion. With, did your motion include keeping it open? That specifying, does it need to specify that we're keeping it open? What ramp or just? I would leave that to our manager. Okay. Second. So I guess. Enfolded in that's just basically allowing staff to work with commercial fishermen and figuring out the, the mechanics of how we how we do that. Maybe there's enforcement measures, and because the the boat and the, the truck and trailer will still be sitting there, so we can even uh, I don't know how we can spot check even some of those. I don't know if the, the you know yeah it may be a little messy, but it, it, it might be. I, I think it would greatly curtail. I think it would greatly curtail the the land the the, the folks from from outside Volusia coming in, which is what we're trying to do. Right. All right, so we think we had a motion in a second. We'll also curtail the locals. It will. It will. Okay. We had a motion in a second. They're op that's open through this weekend, though. Yes. I hope we don't create a... Mad, da mad dash this weekend. There's a mad dash there now. I know. So why aren't we doing it sooner? If this motion fails, that <laughs> will be my next one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Got to laugh. Kelly, if you would, call the roll, please. Commissioner Sachs? No. Commissioner McGurk? Yes. Vice Mayor Cloney? Yes. Commissioner Hartman? No. <laughs> Mayor Owen. <laughs> oh, you guys are killing me. Is it proper to stop and ask people why they voted no so I can know how to vote? <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, I'm going to vote no. And I'll say, one, and actually, since you voted yes, you can't make the next motion in theory, although we could go with it I guess but um, I think if we're gonna do it we should act decisively and act quickly I, I don't I don't agree with pushing it out a whole a whole weekend if we're gonna do it let's do it send the right message and act decisively and quickly I don't know Commissioner Sachs is that why you also delayed or you just don't think it's a measure far enough and are you gonna vote against anything that isn't complete or it's not far enough but I guess my question is are you willing to vote on anything that you know, I don't think there's enough support on the stage right now to go all the way for parks and parking lots. So I guess my question is, if we keep debating this, would you go? Would you vote favorably on something that is a partial measure under the auspices of? I mean, look, I wish we could do more on the beaches, but I can't. So I took what I could get with the ramps being closed. Or, or are you just a, a, a constant no? Because if you are, I think just the rest of us need to know that so we can figure out how to proceed here. I don't want to put you on the spot, but I'm just trying to. Be efficient with our time. Did we not have a motion in a second? We, we did. We had a motion in a second, and it and it failed. And I'm just saying, if you're if you're going to vote no, no matter what, then I don't know if 
Well, I would vote favorably it if it were. It would be presumptuous, Mr. Mayor, with all due respect. No, no, I, I'm, I'm I, trying to. I, you know, I, sometimes I, I vote yes. I, you'd have to bring it before me. I, I, and in I'm, all honesty, no, every measure. I'm asking could, you if if my disagreement with that with that measure was, I think if we're going to do it, we should do it quickly and decisively and sooner. I don't want to wait a whole weekend because I think that sends to Commissioner McGurk's point a kind of a mixed message. Like, hey, we're okay with this for another weekend, but then the party's over. I think we. Just do it now, or or don't do it. No, frankly. Mr. Mayor, I would agree to that. Uh, to as soon as we can. But it wouldn't include all these other measures. It we're just talking boat ramps, no. and I know you wanted more, but I don't think the support's here for more. But I think we could get support for the boat ramp if you went along with it. But I, I, again, I'm not trying to. This is a weird time. I'm just trying to get something that I think could could go forward. So well, I I think it's already been made clear that. I want us to close as many venues Agreed. as possible, city. Okay. Uh, so let's not waste time. All right. Oh, Any other there. on this item? Oh. You want to make another pass at it? I, I'm agreeable to that. If well, you... I, I really can't, but I would be more than happy to say I could second any motion that would close <laughs> it immediately until mm -hmm. the next meeting. I, I think closing it Friday is, I think, this Friday. That gives us tomorrow to figure it out, work with commercial fishermen, giving staff the option to close it starting Friday. Um, if we're going to do it, I'd, I'd say do that or we can move on. Make a motion to close the boat ramp starting this Friday, the 27th, 27th uh, up until our next meeting on April 14th. With the exception of allowing commercial fishermen access. I'll second that motion. Okay. Just for clarity to make sure we're okay, I think both of them were actually on the favorable side. That was actually technically a slightly different motion. So are we okay? Yeah, different motion. Okay. All right. So that was to close it effective 27th of this month through our next commission meeting. Um, if everything drastically changes, we'll have another meeting. We'll release all of this stuff. So we can, we can figure that out. City Clerk, if you'd call the roll, please. Commissioner Sachs. No, I'd like to close it tomorrow. <laughs> Commissioner McCurk. Yes. Vice Mayor Colodi. Yes. Commissioner Hartman. No. Mayor Owen. Yes. Thank you. The struggles with closing it tomorrow is it is 9.04 p.m. There's people packing their boats right now. There's, there's no way we're going to get the word out by 4 a.m. tomorrow for people to come in. So... All right, boat ramps are closed starting 27th through the 15th unless, or 14th unless lifted earlier. Um, let, and let me state, I would encourage the county to close the beach and we can follow suit by closing the uh, beach lots. So that was the next item I was going to go to. I just wanted, to, you know, the, in between our last meeting and this meeting, there was a lot of heated debate about the beach ramps. I tried to tread extremely carefully on that. Commissioners, I, I, I genuinely am very careful when I speak on behalf of the commission. I can't control what other people say. I know a comment was made in a press conference that someone had been in touch, you know, something about the city commission. I didn't say that. Uh, I spoke on behalf of my thoughts and feelings and what I supported. Um, you know, these are unprecedented times that we're all doing our best, so I ask for patience and long-suffering. But we're here now. We can talk about it now. Get some direction from, from each of us. This is your chance to make a comment so I know the footing I have to stand on when I talk to the city or to the county council if I'm speaking on behalf of me or the, the opinion of the commission. So now's your chance to speak. Mr. Mayor. Vice Mayor. The appearance was that it was the, uh, the decision of the commission to take that position, which uh, I, I didn't really like. My suggestion is that for all your negotiations that you do, I applaud you for that. I, I think that's very good. I think one nuance that should have been included is we should have sent the, uh, our emergency management coordinator to stand there and support them if you felt that way because we have a chain of command that, that we should really follow and uh, although a lot of people might not have thought about it but it, it kind of undercut our staff a little bit by uh, by not using them to their to their full abilities so I, w I would have liked to have seen uh, 
I would have liked to have seen that. That's all. Okay. That, that's the only thing. It, it's very important uh, when people see that, and you, you were very careful in your wording. I had no problem with that. It's just the, uh, the appearance of, of how people perceive things is beyond us. And, yeah. it, and it just kind of looked that way. Okay. Um, specifically, though, between now and our next meeting, when we can comment on this or to speak on it, supporting closing the beaches. So I make a motion that we, if the county closes the beaches, we close the beach parking lots. Get, authorize the city manager to close the beach parking lots. Until Second. Okay. Any discussion on that motion? City Clerk, call the roll. Commissioner Sachs. The motion was to close the parking lots only if the beach is closed, correct? If the beach yes. is, if the county closes the beaches, which we can't control. To give the city manager the authority to close the park, the beach park, beach parking lot only. At the same time. At the same time. No. Commissioner McGurk? Yes. Vice Mayor Cloney? Yes. Uh, excuse me, Commissioner Hartman? Yes. Mayor Owen? Yes. Thank you. Okay. So may, I, may I clarify just again? Sure. Just, it's important. We are only clo we would only close the parking lots if the beach is closed. Correct. Yes. That was that motion. That Next. was the motion. Yep. All right. Um, so we had Commissioner McGurk said he supported. Um, I forget how you phrased it. I thought it was well put, though. Does the rest of the commission share that opinion? That the kind of I don't know how we calling for the county to close the beaches. What's what was the what was the measure? What, 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 how did you say that? Well, I just said I'm in support of closing the beach lots as soon as the county closes the beach, gotcha. which okay. we just which voted we just on. Did. Got it. Um, okay. And, and, you know, and I, I think at this point um, I'm in favor of closing the beach. I think that we can all reach out to our county council people in private and discuss with them our personal concerns. Mine is obviously I don't want people from outside the community. I want to try to it, insulate us the locals as much as possible at this time. Okay. I agree with everything you just said. City manager report. All right. Uh, I'm going to give you just a, a kind of like a brief on what have we done so far on the COVID-19. Uh, obviously, the, the, the health and the well being of our community and employees, it remains the top priority for us. Since the beginning of this uh, virus, uh, I have appointed uh, our fire chief to be our planning manager for this, for this event. And then he also has Melissa to help him out with this issue. But since the beginning, I have asked the directors and the employees to use the best cautions in terms of social distancing, uh, sanitizing the work areas. Also, we have changed our uh, type of meetings in terms of face-to-face -face meetings. We went into conference calls. Even we conducted, I uh, think, about 10 interviews. We've done them over the phone. We will be doing our second interviews on a Skype. Um, so uh, we decided on Monday to close all city facilities, including City Hall. I have also directed the directors to come up with the plan in terms of the level of emergencies. So we could have people work from home. Uh, we have to still have some staff remain in the departments. Uh, the phones being directed into, if they're working at home, they're actually forwarding the phone calls to their cell phone number. We're providing some scanners for some of these employees so they could operate. And I think that would be a good indicator for us if the governor's call for a total shutdown, that at some point we will be some departments operating from their homes. Um, we have drafted a personal policy to address quite a few issues that we have came up with in terms of we got a couple of employees that they have kids out of school. So we have some employees who are working from home right now. Uh, we have some employees who were sick at the beginning of the virus 
but we didn't know what they have. So they are home, they're staying for 14 days. Uh, this policy has been shared with... Just, just to be clear, when you said they were sick with the virus, that, that not this virus necessarily, not no, no, COVID, they were just sick. With, and we with just, this virus, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. It's just being sick, and so just to be cautious, we, we, we did that. Got it. Uh, the policy has been shared with other municipalities, as well as the department heads, so everybody looked at it. Right now, you have in front of you a draft personal policy that will be effective tomorrow. So um, quite a few employees we will be sending home to work from home. The maintenance operation, for example, what they've done is they went into shifts. So uh, the ones that they work in the field and have contact with the public, thanks to Melissa, she came up with the program where we are testing these employees just before they go into work, such as maintenance op, police, and fire, and building. Because the building inspectors, they go out and they go to some of these homes. So she's doing that. She's taking temperatures and asking the questions before they go into work. We have provided, obviously, the, uh, the sanitizer to each one of them. We ordered the, the masks. They're back ordered, but as soon as we get them, we're going to provide them to anybody who wants them, especially the one that they have interaction with the public. So the plan might change as we go, depending on the level of emergency. But right now, we will maintain some staff in buildings, and if they are to work from home, we're trying to give the social distancing and keep them away from each other. So uh, yeah. with that, I'll be more than happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Any questions for city manager? What are we doing with outside contractors? Outside contractors such as? If you have an outside contractor who does our, our AC maintenance or something like that, are they being tested? Before? I don't know. I've no, the, typically what happens is we have a contract with a contractor. We call them in, but they're not coming in every day. Right. But should we be health screening them before they actually come in the building? We haven't called anybody in, but that's a good question. We'll, we'll do that. Going, yeah, going forward, if, you know. Yeah, I believe all the offices right now, the doors are locked, so they're trying to do interactions as much as they can through the door. Right. And if they have to come in, they're, they're being encouraged to ask, but we're dealing with not necessarily personal and HIPAA information, um, but with the safety and stuff. They do have thermometers to go ahead and check the contractor coming in if they would like. Because we have a cleaning crew that comes in once or twice a week, so and, I mean I don't know. Do they live and work in the area, or uh, coming from Orlando? <laughs> New York. It's a New York crew. janitors that work uh, the buildings are at different stages some are three days a week the police department is five days a week um that's the con you just approved a new contract yeah going right to he, he's saying what kind of pre everybody else were the health screening beforehand those folks are coming in overnight and that's, that's the only thing is okay. they come in after hours after most of us are closed like, yeah you know when they come here to do this building um police department they do it during the day that's the biggest I'm going to call the company and just ask them how, when these employees go to work, yeah. what kind of measures are they taking? Yeah, just see if they have a plan in place and, and we can, you know, we'll have that in hand. If, 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 yeah, if there's ever an issue, then we'll have, well, they have a plan and here's their plan, so. Okay. They're transitioning out. I know, yes. So. That's, that's a, that's a oh. comment. Right. I, I don't so. think All right. City clerk report. No report? We, sorry, go ahead. Oh, I'm story. so sorry. Here's a report. We have assistant city clerk that just started. Yes. <clears throat> and her name is Sharon. And she's from the airport. She just started this week. Yes. Very excited about that. I know you are. Yes. Any questions for the clerk? City attorney? No report. Any other business, any staff, anything that we missed? This is... We got one thing, all right. Just one clarification, because I want to see where everyone's comfort level lies. Um, but in the event something happened, like if the governor did do a stay-at-home order for everyone, 
Are you guys uh, interested in the virtual meeting? And let's say it was going to hit our commission meeting. Where's? I know we passed it, but would yeah, yeah, you, that's a good point. So, or would um, you rather have it canceled? I guess those are the, the the two options you have. Yeah, with the emergency order that's in place, what I mean, look, my preference is that we get together and have these discussions. But with the emergency order in place, what kind of powers do does Khaled and or I have at the moment? I mean, with that, could we can't? I mean. That's why I'm asking you now. It's not necessarily clear, so I'd rather okay. everyone be comfortable with what okay. whatever measures we do take. Let's talk about it now. Yeah. Okay. So the, the question is, I think, if governor passes, you know, governor says, you know, more extreme measures, shelter in place type stuff, like other states have done, uh, and it goes over when we have a commission meeting. How should we respond? And we got a, we got a few things now tied to that date, so. I think we just need to give some authorizations to somebody to be able to make some calls on that. Vice Mayor, you wanted to speak. Well, I, personally, I'm going to be out of town for the next two and a half weeks. I'm not going to New York. <laughs> through, so. through the commission meeting or, or before that? I will be back for the commission be back meeting. For that, okay. But in the event that there is a, uh, a need for an emergency meeting, I certainly will be available to uh, to discuss that As a from somewhere else virtually. So virtually. You're, you're saying if we need to if we need to keep the commission meeting or have an emergency meeting, just to take the virtual thing. That yes. Okay. Yes, I, that, I would do that. that you voted for. You and voted I, against. <laughs> and I <All> also. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know if I approved the first time we did that, but. Uh, you uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I do plan myself right. uh, around that, but uh, one other thing is, yes. is do you have to renew every seven days our emergency order? No, I think we just tied it to the counties. Okay. It's, not, it's concurrent with the I counties. I didn't want to miss that. Yeah. So. Okay. You did. Commissioner McGirt, comments on this one? You comfortable with virtual? Yeah, I'm comfortable with the virtual. However, I think that um, it's important to physically be able to get together if possible. Um, <clears throat> it's important for government to function in the event of an emergency, and I um, and I expect us to be able to step up to that plate and do some things that you otherwise may not do because we've taken on these roles. So the collaboration between this commission is extremely important if this situation gets even more dire. Yeah, agreed. And I think tonight has worked. I mean, it's been interesting, but you know, we've we've largely followed CDC guidelines. The, the concern would be if it goes from ten to zero, or you know, something mm -hmm. like that. You know, no public type stuff. Then, right. so um, Commissioner Sachs, any additional comments? Extreme times call for extreme measures. So I would approve of that. The virtual. Virtual. So basically, if we reality. if we have to, what I'm hearing is we do the virtual meeting. Hartman, uh, Commissioner Hartman, anything to add? I'm opposed to it. Okay. Any alternate ideas, or just you know, still like no, the I, I, you know, I think it's my my background that, um, that I was elected to do a job to represent the people, and I don't think sitting at home skyping is what they expected. Um, if in fact somebody is quarantined. Because they have symptoms, I can understand that. But, but other than that, I think we've taken measures here tonight that would allow us to physically meet and have a meeting or cancel. Question? Well, but the canceling, I don't, we don't have that. I mean, we have a meeting scheduled on the 14th, and unless, even if the governor says not to meet, it's, you know, there's, uh, there's no way to cancel, I guess, is the, the concern. But we, I had the, enough commission say they're okay with virtual, so. You bring yes. up a good. You bring up a good point. But if it's mandated by the state, then we're prohibited from meeting together. So we'd have to do it virtually. Well, I'll take exception to that. Mm -hmm. Yes. The governor tells us that we can't meet. He's a, I don't agree that we have to listen to that. In other words, we have to run a government. Who's running the government? So. The virtual, if we got very dire, I can understand the virtual part of that. However, if the governor is telling local government or government bodies not to, that they cannot meet, I don't think that's what the governor would, would be saying. I don't think he would say that. I think it would be more the guidance of right. the, the limiting the group. So, all right, what I'm hearing is um, 
everybody get your N95 mask. We're, we're meeting on the 14th. Unless <laughs> things have dramatically changed, and it's so. Um, all right. Any other things from staff? I don't normally do that, but I want to make sure we didn't miss anything. Chief, anything on your on your side out there? Nope. Good. Thank you for being here, Commission. Pretty good. All right. Thank you all. Meeting adjourned. Thank you.